test. <clears throat> oh wait, my microphone was so always working. No. Um. <clears throat> well, okay. We've been muted. You guys can hear me. Hello. I guess we can talk. Oh, I'm setting up things. <clears throat> so I am kind of sick. Um. Fun fact. Like right before going to sleep, I just like took the freaking sickness from my family and like instantly like after like 30 minutes I started feeling like way worse like it just it just happened so fast and now I'm like <clears throat> I'm all crippled and stuff I'm all tired and, and sick and whatever uh, <clears throat> but oh hello tree so yeah I'm I'm, I'm still here for VOD review um, da -da 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 -da. Got all the codes prefetched, which is great. It is amazing. Um, got one, two, three. How many do you have in your queue? I have 35, and I'm not taking any more because I probably will be extremely tired. Plus, like I, I said to the other person that maybe we can like do some matches after I review their game. Uh, that way we can do some bit of live reviewing. So that might add up to the total, and that, that might be uh, <clears throat> more than I can handle like, like, regarding the current situation of my uh, status effects of being sick. <laughs> she get what I mean. Oh, hello! More people! Which I do not hear because I have OBS turned on. Hello, Neon Wyvern. Hello, Tree. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> yup. <clears throat> so. Yeah, I guess I guess chill season do be hitting hard. <laughs> uh, one, two, three. Like turn like left or right, I don't know. My geography. So I just went straight to Hawaii instead. Are in the game. And uh yeah, I, I didn't have my Discord sound set up, so we couldn't hear you guys in the beginning. Uh, but it's okay. So, uh, studio mode, we don't need this. Oh, my camera is off, as usual. As usual. And we're back on now. Yep, might be. This is bad. Thanks for the figuring out. Um, Deactivate. Okay, again. Ooh, camera is working. Cool. Uh, so we got some clips to review today. Jump straight into it. Let me just pull up my uh, info sheet thing. Where is it? Where did I put it? Uh, menu. It is called VOD review. VOD review replay oh, uh, congrats on the affiliate. Oh, thank you. I, I just got an ad while watching the stream. <laughs> no, really? Oh, that's not... Yeah. Uh, that shouldn't happen. I think I disabled ads and stuff like that. Oh. The, 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 the problem that. is that it's so confusing. It's like, oh, do you want to uh, turn off slash on? It's like, I don't know if some are required or not. It's like, can I not require them, please? Well, I, I refreshed the page, so maybe ads are automatically turned on for when you first log in but maybe you turned off ads for like mid broadcast ads disabled pre-roll notification whatever 
Uh, okay, 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 okay. Let's let's get into it. I have my sheet right here. Uh, the discovery is right there. Okay, so first clip for today. It is uh, the Rela on Eel Tail Tower Control by Hats Off. Uh, so let's let's jump into it. We'll figure out things as we go. Uh, let me check their comments. They're like, even though I didn't feel, even though I didn't win, I felt like it's one of my best games with Brella, and I feel like I'm understanding how to use Brella more. I just want to know what I can improve and on and what I excelled at. <clears throat> so. Uh, the Rella, the team compositions, we have two brushes, a sniper, okay, they have an E-leader. They do have quite a bit more range, I think. Mm, so that's yeah, gonna be interesting. Uh, your green screen broke on the stream. Okay, let me pause. Camera, <laughs> doesn't work again. Oh, not Red Dog redeemed the camera issue. I, I swear, why does it do that? Can you not stay put for once? What's <laughs> fine last stream? Anyways, mm. back. Mm. Mm. So um, okay. recently I've been trying the the undercover umbrella. My brain is kind of like rotten by playing it. <laughs> so my tips may be <laughs> weird today. Um, but okay, this so this is the normal umbrella. Mm. I guess nice let me track. take a look real quick at the map. Not very, yeah. Paint needs paint. Uh, wait, who am I looking at? Okay, Brella. <clears throat> so always the the general tip: always make sure that you have enough paint uh, on your back or in on your sides or around you that you can escape and approach the enemies from an advantageous position. <clears throat> um, especially because with the Brella, like you're not as fast. You can't react as fast as other. Uh, shooter weapons would be able to. You can't like paint at your feet and then start swimming again. Can't do that trick. Um, so I guess I guess the Brella can give you some cover while you're figuring out an escape route. So that's also an option maybe. <clears throat> oh my gosh, the camera. Okay, fuck your camera. No more camera. <clears throat> I like I like that you're getting far ahead. But yeah, not so far ahead that you don't have an escape route, and you're mm -hmm. you're you're playing Brella in the way that I would imagine you're supposed to play Brella, which is you just kind of go ahead and you're like, look at me, look at me, shoot at me, I have a shield. Mm -hmm. And it's just really annoying. And then you let your teammates figure out the rest. I guess though, the one thing um, well, for this Brella specifically is that it has a long uh, time where the shield is is open. So you can defend yourself, and also the shield has like more life than um, the one on the undercover, I think. But you can't shoot while you're doing that, so you, you definitely need a teammate nearby if you... Like, you, you mainly act as a distraction, but you can't shoot while you're using your shield. So you do need to have teammates to assist you, and pl play off of that shield. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, you have special, by the way. We probably start using it now, especially because a lot of enemies are rushing. We're rushing on the tower. Um, best use of spe I mean, worst use of specials is to not use them at all. So always use your specials, even if it's not the best use. At least you got something out, and and it made the enemies slow down a bit. Or yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. This is a I white dog. I was watching Jim pod review earlier today, and he brought up a good point that you want to use your special frequently because if you die, then you definitely don't get to use your special. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So what I was I gonna say? I forgot. Um, the Brella does have some range though, um, so you can you can stay kind of back, especially if you don't plan on, on like killing people, or because this map is kind of uh, it doesn't have open terrain uh, really much, but it does have a lot of uh, high ground. So I guess what you can use is your 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 drops, like when the when the ink falls down, and just like try to pick up with that. It's gonna be a bit slower, but at least you're gonna be safer, right? It's not like you really need. 
it's not like the opponents are gonna move and like you're gonna shoot fire one shot and then you're gonna be like oh I need to track them and, and make sure the other shot land because they're they're gonna stick on the tower so as long as you keep firing in the general direction of the tower you should be able to kill them eventually and and it's best to stay safe while you're trying to kill them rather than um, dying because then you can basically pressure the tower for longer <coughs> Bro said, screw the camera. I mean, I can try again, but if it, if it just pops up on the stream with a black box, then that's gonna be annoying. Let me try that again. It was probably as good as I could ever play on the Brella, so I don't have too much advice. Okay, come uh, back for now. <clears throat> I wonder if. I wonder if one thing to pay more attention to is the weapons that your opponents have, because mm -hmm. with the Brella, you like for that blaster, you don't want to be holding up your shield because they can just shoot around it. You want to be in attacking them mode. And against the E leader, you don't need to be shielding mm. if you get close to them because they're not gonna. You don't want to give them time to charge or anything. You can just aggro them down. I mean, uh, I whereas guess. with the splatter shot pro against that, you'll want to shield more often against that. So maybe maybe that's something to think about: is be more aware of the mm -hmm. weapon you're fighting and how it interacts with your shield. I mean, in theory, I, I get what you mean. It, it's it's um, pretty logical. But then you got to think about the fact that this is a rapid blaster, so the the explosion radius is not as big. So hitting around the shield, especially because if you see the shield of the um, of the, br the regular Brella, it's not like a perfect circle like uh, the one on the undercover. It's like uh, a thicker on the sides. So if you try to hit, maybe if you hit above, that could work. But I definitely see the rapid blasters not necessarily trying to play off of the side shots. They really try to aim on point on the target. Uh, usually, uh, that's what I think. Um, yeah. I, I guess it do, it, yeah. can't, it doesn't hurt as long as you're acting as a distraction. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, I guess we can move on to the next clip. So it's on Mahi Mahi Resort with uh, the blah 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 on Splat Zones. Okay. Splat Zones. Um, blob. I do have one that I want to show, but it's less of a VOD review and more of a well. I did really good this game. <laughs> okay, you could see that maybe afterwards. Um, What's so up, they're uh, saying it's from no Nana? Eye Nana? Uh, They're saying aside Hello. from really stupid deaths mm. from walking into Buyas, it is is it possible that I got kills on opponents because of bad game lag early on in the match? Also, I think I'll be switching uh, to machine. Also, that machine on the opponent's team was so good, killed me twice with a soda. I know I made super stupid mistakes at the end. Okay, well then, let's let's check it. <clears throat> Soda kills can be a little RNG dependent, but not all the time. Ouch. Well, I guess that fizzy kill, like death, was mainly due to not reacting fast enough. <clears throat> I guess whenever you see a fizzy being thrown, you need to anticipate that it don't might have three charges. You don't want to go back. Yeah, I s yeah exactly. You really yeah. don't want to do that. Mm. Usually going to the sides is the safest bet, because going back will just make you take all the hits and then going forward is kind of what the weapon wants usually, because uh, it's on the machine, I think it's on the Luna, I think it's on the ball point, yeah, which also has pretty good close range the, shots. Like time avoiding death from, uh, Fizzy can be a little RNG dependent because there is always the random chance that the Fizzy just takes a complete 90 and goes the same way you're going. <laughs> I, I I do think it's pretty like it's not it's it's mostly straight. It just like goes a little bit to the sides. Yeah, like, and I don't think it can go forward, it go forward, but it can hit almost a 90 degree turn. Okay. I know that if it hits walls, then it will change trajectory. That that's something that it does. Uh, but yeah, usually yeah, like if you look at the weapons that get assigned a fizzy bomb, it's usually weapons that have good close range options. So if you if you run back with the fizzy bomb, you're gonna take all the hits. If you run forward, uh, then you're gonna be faced with the close range weapon, and usually that's not a good thing either. 
plus. So to make the so to make the straight pretty pretty neat path as well. It's able to mm -hmm. it's able to cut off the ones from running away depending on what the weapon is. Yep. Um, also, something I'm noticing in your gameplay currently is that maybe you're getting a bit too close. Um, the blah blubber is actually a, a, it has a decent amount of range. Um, it, like, like the the shots are gonna touch the ground not that far from you, but then if they bounce enough, they're gonna go much farther than uh, you think that they would. So you don't really need to play on the zone, uh, especially because it's not that consistent at killing. Because you need to do a lot of math, and uh, it's pretty hard. So if you do want to um, contribute more to your team, I, I figured don't go on the zone. Just what you could do is uh, go on the on that side there. Maybe like stay on top of here. Just fire your blobs down and cause some confusion for the enemies without actually putting yourself in danger. You, you don't you don't really want to be down there. Especially because on your team you have the uh, roller, you have the pro and the uh, splash shot, which are all very good at. Um, Close range fighting, uh, definitely better than you. So you want to leave them to do that job while you assist them with some random blobs at that distance. That's yeah, a good point. and if you can, if you see an opponent like in a uh, more enclosed space, take advantage of that. Hello, everybody. We got Nana, Neon Waver, and R. I forgot what is the correct way to pronounce. Um, well, we've got the whole game. I think. Ready. Ooh. Ready, ready, ready. I don't know. Um. Oh. Okay, so what else can we okay. find from this game? Yeah, it seems like you had an intention to go up, but then just like went back down and started fighting close range. Which again, you, should, you probably shouldn't do. Like here, you're in a good spot. You don't need... What, what you should... Okay, yeah, walking into Booyaz, I see what you meant. De definitely whenever you, you play the game, pay attention to where you're located and whether that works or not. Like, if you're in a spot that you get killed from, uh, try to stand in that spot more. If, you get, if you're in a spot where you get killed more, try to avoid that spot. Just think critically about what happens in the game. Yeah, definitely do that. That could really help out and make a difference. And I, I, I guess like another thing to consider is then not not only consider where you are and like where you die the most or where you <clears throat> kill people the most. Also consider where certain t weapon classes like to sit the most. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like I know some people like me have a pattern of where I go when I have a hydra. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing I would say is, um, th since you're playing Splat Zones, right, your goal, your main goal, really isn't to get kills. Uh, I mean, especially with the blob, like, that's not the, the blob's role, either way. But it's when you, whenever you're playing Splat Zone, your main focus should be the Splat Zone and painting it. And you can't paint it if you're dead. So, just notice, oh, okay, if I'm on this pillar, I'm safe. I'm not necessarily getting kills, but that's not necessarily your goal. Your goal is to stay alive. The, the first thing in Splatoon is to stay alive, to be able to contribute. Uh, though you got 20 kills. Mm -hmm. The most possible space would be to find a place where you can maybe be a little bit on an advantage point, a little higher up, so it's a little harder for something else to kill you, but where you can still fire like into someone else's point of view. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know I'm what wondering, state... I'm wondering if, as Blah Blobber on this map, if it's better to be at, I guess, what's called Snipe on the right, or if it's better to go to the left area. I'm wondering, I'm starting to think it's the left area after seeing that replay, because you get more, you can see more of the zone, so you can just chuck more blobs at the zone, because you can see more of it. Yeah. What do you guys think? Uh, I, I um, do what's, think... What's the map you're on? I, I do think that the blob that it isn't really like that restricted uh, in where it can place itself because like unlike other weapons it don't it doesn't need line of sight and it's not even that it can hit above cover it can hit like around cover um, so for example places like um, you see the little, the little uh, tower uh, right on top of the zone basically you can just stand behind and fire at the wall in the back 
and basically just have random blobs coming at the enemies on the sides of the zone without you actually getting exposed. Uh, so you can definitely move around, and uh, you're not necessarily that locked in compared to like weapons like uh, Sniper, a Hydra, and stuff like this. It can be more mobile. Um, I, get, I guess we can move on to the next clip. It is the Octobrush on Mahi Mahi Splat Zones again by Reg. Uh, let me find it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your camera's dead again, Chris. My camera's dead again. Okay. I'm just gonna turn it off. <clears throat> <laughs> um, people in the chat are talking. That's cool. Uh, so let's let's play it. Is it the correct? I don't think it is. Whoops. Actually. No, it's not. I do have a clip you could probably examine via like something someone else would want would want to avoid happening to them. We'll, we'll, we'll quick replay. That was the wrong one. What was the correct one? It's Octo Russian Mah. Yes. Uh, Octo. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, okay. This one. Okay. Let's go. Uh, so they're saying, uh, Reg, I lost by a knockout and I can't point out what I did wrong. I think I did so much wrongs. Just give me any feedback, even bad ones. I want to learn from my mistakes. Okay. Give me any feedback, even bad feedback. Uh, that <laughs> got some shooters mainly on the enemy team. We got two blobs on either side. And then you guys got roller and brush. Um... Seems like a kind of awkward fight here. Uh, with the Octobrush, my main suggestion would probably be to take the high ground because your shots are pretty good at, at painting, uh, but you have like not that great range. So if you get on the tower, you can actually con like consistently paint the zone without being too much in danger, and basically lock the zone down, which is, which is the main goal of this mode. Um, also, like that, the thing is. Uh, the zone here on this map is pretty open, so if you ever face the shooters, you're, they're gonna have more range than you. Uh, so you definitely want to play around cover more, which there isn't a lot. So mainly your, your job this match would be to focus on painting the zone, in my opinion. Maybe use your splat bombs to pressure out a distance, but don't get too close. Unless it works like, like this now. <laughs> Another thing that I would suggest doing is when you do get zip caster, if you're in a need to control the zone, you see that little bumper on the top, like on the top right, like on the right of the screen that's pink and blue? That's some pretty cool zip caster movement. Um, yeah, um, if you go to that bumper and then that little like uninkable wall, you can quite easily position yourself from your spawn right behind the enemy, like right behind the zone. Um, and just two different. One thing I guess I, I could suggest, which I saw like uh, earlier, is that uh, whenever you basically kind of wiped the enemy team and had the zone secured, you didn't really move forward and try to um, basically secure that lead. Like basically start to go into the enemy's base and, and pressure them there so they have no chance of, of getting back to the zone, right? You just waited for them to actually get back, which is not what you want to do if you want to keep the zone. Not only that, but it was also waiting on the zone. So you don't want to fight on the zone when you control it, because if you get splatted on the zone, you're going to when you get splatted, the enemy ink will explode around you. So you're going to give the enemy ink a lot of free coverage on the zone. So you don't want to fight on the zone. Yeah, especially when you control. It. It's like j just imagine one of them wants to start throwing a spe. Is there any special you can? Yeah, imagine they want to paint with a uh, tri strike right? They're like, oh, let me plop it on the zone to paint it, or a booyah bomb, and then, oh, well, I'm right on the zone. Well, I guess I'm screwed. I'm not sure committing suicide was the right play there. <laughs> Definitely getting some kills, though. Um, usually, whenever they die, they at least get two kills before. But that's pretty interesting. Though, I, I guess, I like, do you really need to... Falling in the water. <clears throat> I guess do you really need to get in though if you want to get the kills? Because for example, there's that blob just uh, firing from afar. Usually they stay on the tower, on, on that tower they're in right now. I guess you could just throw a well-placed uh, suction bomb and just like get rid of them for a few seconds. Uh, that's also a way where you, you wouldn't have to get in danger as much. 
Yeah. Yeah. And see, and seeing how this is going now, I I assume that's probably the reason you guys lost was you just got outpainted by the blob lover. Mm hmm So pro probably probably yeah, zip casting it or even flanking it might have been. Oh, true. Yes, how you, you, ha you have match. Zip caster. I liked the I liked the one v one fights that you took. The movement was pretty good. Uh, like you would swing a little bit, and then you realized, oh, I'm not I'm not hitting them. You realize that fast, and then you move to a new position. Uh, I noticed a couple of squid rolls in there. Good at good at switching up your movement. Okay, so we have next battle replay from Anana. Hello, it is you. Uh, with the Luna on bridge turf war. No comment. So let's see. What do you, do, you, do you have any comments to add right now about it? I don't remember this battle. Okay. Well, we're gonna see. But hmm, I know. I think this is one that went good, that went good on my side. Oh. Vanilla Luna. Yeah, Vanilla Luna. I love I love the cast of Luna. I think I was just um grinding gear here, trying to get my moto shades up to full intensity. Ouch. Okay. Hmm. I definitely oh, feel one. like that that death you got right there. Um. I mean, it's pretty early in the game, so it doesn't really point to gameplay stuff specifically, but just like, you were in an open spot, you weren't really sticking close to walls, and you weren't really moving as much either. Uh, the Luna really wants to play off of cover a lot. <clears throat> yeah, I know that. Okay. Usually if you're not uh, around cover, you want to be close to a teammate. That, that helps. I don't know if camping the bubble there was uh, necessarily a good idea because you, you, you could totally have someone super jump to you and kill you without you knowing. <clears throat> I think. I'm just surveying. A I little think. time there too. I think you probably could have painted up a little bit around there and like spent the time watching the bubble. There. I think he's pretty alright oh. on the map. Um, okay. uh, let me the thing, uh, I get. I guess like in in turf war, you really want to start moving up and spawn camping the enemies uh, if you can. Um, so definitely, as soon as you got a great hold on the middle, which now currently seems to be the case, you want to start moving up, especially on this map. Oh, uh, right there. It's, it's especially great because you have a lot of coverage to play off, um, such as the, the little, like the, the snipe tower, uh, if you stay under it, you can actually use your Luna Blaster to kill people on the sides. <clears throat> so basically you can, you can prevent the enemies from coming up to you and like, uh, give them a suggestion to stand back while your sniper can essentially pressure them to move even farther and then you have the other two weapons which can actually kill them if if need be. Uh -huh. I know this was a game with I know this was a game with random, so this is solo queue. No, I, so, yeah, I know, it's, I it's just any, like I general don't have strategy. Any like some places I would put myself, for example, if you if you do want to start like pressuring in the ramp, you can put yourself here. If you do want to start pressuring above the ramp, you can put yourself down, uh, like on the side of it, and then just like start moving f uh, up and up uh, even more as you get the kills. Because it's pretty easy to spawn camp the enemies on on that map with uh, blaster weapons. It, it yeah. seemed like you were a little bit scared about moving up because you were afraid of how short range you were. Um, but in this case, one of your options is that you can poke with your splat bomb. Lethal bombs are really Yeah, good. if you notice, I was throwing quite a few of those. You did, but usually they were, like, closer to your feet, I saw. Um, you could have, like, hung out that closer too. towards the wall and just, like, really throw them deeper into enemy ink. Just to kind of harass the enemy and slow them down slightly. Because even if all you do is slow them down for a second or two, that's still a big deal. Every time you do that... 
it adds up. Especially again, if you if you do want to do the thing where you you move up into their base, having a splat bomb basically do the pressure while you're moving up and basically protecting you kind of is very helpful. It gives you a, a, a second to swim up. Mm -hmm. uh, the I know the main the thing I of... was right about in this situation was that charger, but I think I overestimated them <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so yeah. we got we got some chat messages from. Nana, she, she, oh, that's you. Okay, uh, this yep. was a replay that started with a 14, 15, 16 second wipeout at the very start of the game and went bad the rest of the game after. Okay, we, we might look at it afterwards if we have time. Now let's move on to the next clip, which is from uh, Just Gizmo. It is a Tetra clip on mincemeat splat zones. I noticed like splat zones was the mode that was the most um, the most sent. Uh, if I look at the stats... I think yes. that's the right clip at least. I know I had two clips with a flat roller. Um, so they're saying I lost one of my many A, a rank battles. No, is one of the many A ranks battles I lost. Okay. So we have Tetras, uh, Stamper, two shooters, more shooters on the enemy team. And they do have the reflux and the big swig. The big swig, which is pretty good at the zone. What are you doing? You're squid bagging in right in front of the enemies while being in their ink. If that's how the rest of the match goes, then I, I wouldn't be surprised if you indeed lose this. Ouch. How many quick respawn are you using? Uh, lots of it. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Usually, okay, so like Wavebreaker seems to be pretty effective against the Tetras because the Tetras are locked into the rolling animation for uh, quite a quite a while. Uh, I, I don't know if like super jumping back all the time is really that good of a play. Because you keep dying. Um, but yeah, I, I guess with the Tetras you, you can roll, but I don't know if... Oh my gosh, those deaths are really awkward so yeah I, I was gonna say like I don't know if, if rolling is necessarily the only thing you want to do with the tetras uh, but I don't I don't really play okay. tetras so I wouldn't be able to tell because you can still fire your gun without rolling yeah you can yeah part of me wants to say you're diving into any ink too much and falling into it but at the same time i think that's how you're supposed to play tetras yeah, <laughs> yeah so I, I i've noticed three things i mean i have three things to say so the first one is that whenever you super jump you usually just the first thing you do after your jump is regardless of the situation you're in if it's dangerous or not you just start rolling forward with no consideration for like whether you're rolling into two very visible uh ink storms so i would just uh maybe vary your strategies whenever you land uh, don't focus on what's forward don't just start rolling forward uh, another thing is so okay uh, about the other so yeah the wave breaker here you saw that there was a wave breaker you often see them you get shot once by it and then you're like okay I'm probably gonna get shot again by the second wave of the wave breaker and then sub uh, sub by the third one uh, after some time so your reaction your first reaction should be okay now is my time to my time to stop rolling so I can actually jump and escape this um, and then another thing I wanted to mention is uh, basically how the other um, duelies are usually played uh, whenever they roll like you don't really want to roll at first you, you don't want to get into the enemy's face by rolling you want to start like just walking normally like any other shooter and then whenever they start shooting at you um ouch okay yeah whenever they start shooting at you then you start rolling and you don't necessarily need to do the two rolls at once you just do one if you need to go farther you can do the second one and then you just hold your stick in, in the direction you want to move after you roll and then as soon as you're actionable again, you're gonna start moving. And the fact that you started moving enables more rolls, right? So you can basically go into the enemy's face, they start shooting at you, you start rolling to escape. Then after they adjust their aim and start aiming at you again, then 
since you already had time to start walking, then you, you're enabled to do two more rolls, which you can basically just roll. Whenever they start locking onto you, you roll again. And they lock onto you again, you roll again, right? So I don't know if Tetra's gameplay is, is the same. Um, but yeah, it feels like you're just rolling all the time. And I, I, I guess, okay, fourth tip I could give right now is maybe just train... Um, uh, try to jump, actually. Try, try to jump with the... Uh, I, I, I saw you a few times see the wave breaker. You were like, hmm, the wave breaker shot me once. Let me stop. And then you, you had like one second of inaction where you were just wondering, okay, what am I supposed to do now? I'm supposed to jump over it. And then the next action you took was to roll into the wave, the second wave of the wave breaker. So you, you had an attempt to jump, but just you, you your brain just got confused because it's the same button to jump and to roll. So you just ended up rolling instead of jumping. Even though I think you wanted to jump. So definitely try to train on this. Try to yeah, if it's, get your mind. If it's a mechanical yeah, issue, one common problem you can do anyone's probably gonna have with really I can only roll when they mean to jump, or I can only jump when they mean to roll. Uh, one one way to help against that is to uh, just make yourself get into squid form. So that oh, you yeah. don't accidentally jump while also put inputting a direction to accidentally make yourself roll. Because if you're in squid form, you don't roll. Yep. I know I'm pretty Close good about this because um, I often try to ba basically act as a normal shooter, right? And I'm getting close to people, then I'm jumping. They're like, oh, they, they're jumping. Predictable arc. And let me shoot at them. And then, oh, roll out of nowhere. <laughs> so I can jump, I can do squid rolls, and then I can do the actual dually rolls. Uh, so that's that's cool. Definitely something you can train on. Okay. It's also the case I saw almost all of the fights you took were on the splat zone. And that was mm -hmm. part of because you were so, uh, super jumping in so aggressively, which you're running a quick respawn build, which is kind of what you'd expect from a quick respawn build. But as a as a Tetra Dooley's, you should really be uh, utilizing some of the other places to try and catch people as they're going back to the zones. Um, because whenever you get splatted on the zone, not only are you out of the fight, but you also cause an ink explosion for the enemy team. So getting splatted on the zone is helping the enemy team even more than if you get splatted off of the zone. So as much as possible, especially as a Dark Tetra Duelies, you should probably be trying to pick your fights uh, off of the zone. Yeah. Also, like, great mention, actually, about the... Um the ink explosion because it is actually pretty big um so the, usually whenever you're close to a teammate and and one of you two get killed uh the other one is probably gonna get killed uh right after that's usually how it goes but actually the reason why is that if you if you look at oh the ink explosion that you see there is like bigger than a than a splat bomb i think uh than a burst bomb i meant it's around collection um, bomb radius um let me actually like take the suction. The, 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 the difference between the two is that that doesn't cause damage. That just slows you, slows your teammate down a lot. That still helps a lot, though. Yeah, it's well. pretty massive. Teammate is really going to get your shots more often. Um. So yes, definitely mind that. Yeah, also, I wanted to check uh, the range of the Tetris because I I don't really know its range, but I think it's it's got. Pretty good range. Let me check. Uh, I think it's yeah, they, they, do, they definitely can't use their range. Just less than that. Alright, Tetris now. Um, okay. In that match, I think. I guess I agree with what Olker said that you're probably dodge rolling a little too much. Uh, a lot of your dodge. I, I, I see that you have the idea of I'm a skirmisher, I'm going to go up to the enemy and annoy them, but you're going so far into enemy ink that your team can't help you. They can't follow up on your skirmishing. And so that hmm, got you splatted a lot. You were also dodge rolling forward a lot, which sure gets you to the enemy faster, but it seems like like even though they were shorter range weapons, they were kiting you just because you weren't able to shoot as you were dodge rolling forward. And dodge rolling forward is just a pretty predictable thing. I wonder if, so, if this I will is say the technique this. you're gonna go for. I think maybe 
going for a zigzag pattern might be good. I, I think you want to be like flanking and, and whatnot instead. Also, yeah, I did just do a small check. I threw a, I threw a um, suction bomb down on the ground, stood right where the suction bomb landed, and then uh, had myself flat out by the bot. Yeah, the radius of the, the explosion same. when you die is the exact same as the radius of a suction bomb. Yep. So, yeah, indeed, do not stay on this one. So, I, I just checked the um, weapons ranges. Seems like the Tetras uh, have pretty good range. They have slightly less than the Glugas and slightly. Uh, uh, quite a bit more than uh, the normal dualies. Um So actually, what I think you should do with the uh, with the tetras instead of going, instead of trying to go two in, because it's it's true that it, they have lots of rolls so they can bamboozle the enemies. But I don't necessarily think that the plan is to get into their face. I think the plan is more so to basically kite them, kind of like maybe the um, the dualies crawlers. Uh, but more close range, uh, obviously, because it has slightly less range and more rolls. So basically, more bamboozle, less range. Uh, but still, you, you should try to stay pretty safe. Um, but yeah. Yeah, okay. I think hiding. I, I mean, I, just... that's how I prefer to play is <laughs> most weapons is kiting. So of course, I would say, yeah, definitely kiting. Play. You, you have quite a bit of range. You don't, you don't need to get that close. Um, just quick mention before we go back to the VOD, what did I want to say? I wanted to say that, um, yes, the, so the rolls on the Tetras are the, the longest to get out of, like, the amount of time that you need to get out of the roll, the, so, okay, so definitely one thing that you want to do is, instead of being like other what weapons you where, where you have, like, basically two rolls, rolls, basically, it takes a long time to be able to actually move again, in comparison uh -huh. to all the other rolls, all so, the so other duel leagues. So basically, the the strat would be instead of of um, thinking that your rolls can necessarily carry fights, you just use like two first rolls, um, like you would on any other um, duelie, and then your your two remaining rolls, you need to use them to get back uh, from the fight, right? Get back to safety, and then uh, since you're safer, you should have enough time for the for the animation to finish and for you to be actionable again. But you never want to finish your full rolls in the middle of, of the enemy's face, because then you're gonna be in trouble. Uh, anyways, yeah, let's... especially considering the re the recovery time between being able to roll again out of your fourth roll is also pretty long. Yeah. Um. Do think about what, where you'll end up after all those rolls. Anyways, uh, next clip. It is the it is the sixth clip. Carbon deco on sturgeon. Um, da -da -da -da. Clumblitz by Benro. So let's check it. <clears throat> Clumblitz Sturgeon. Uh, they're saying, so I don't exactly plan on maining Carbon Deco, but I would like to at least... To, to be at least using it a bit. I don't know how I'm supposed to close the gap a lot of the time, um, and what to do when uh. I can't. Someone help please. Ignore the gear by the way, I was just trying to level some things, um, in the hat. Okay. Carbon Deco movement wise, I would immediately suggest vertical flick. That's usually going to be your main movement option. If you need Am to get two, it's going to get really quickly. But otherwise, yeah. it's suggested to use horizontal flicks to paint and keep an area around yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing that the enemy team has two snipers. Um, definitely, you don't want to uh, like run up to them visibly. You definitely want to use um, cover more, especially I would say for the the carbon deco since it has burst bomb, it can play off of uh, walls pretty well. So you can just throw a burst bomb on the wall and just stick there, wait for someone to come around the wall, and then you just flag them really quickly. Uh, but definitely do not try to fight the the snipers like you did in the beginning of the game, because that's gonna just result in you not being able to get up to them. If you do want to uh, fight with them, you do have your special, which which has some more range and you can use it from safety. You can also try to poke at them with the burst bomb if you want to move. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you threw two burst bombs at the, um, at the enemy power clam, but they didn't die. Oh yeah, uh, so as a backliner man, I play Hydra. Uh, yeah, Trizuka is one of the serious specials. Uh, oh yeah, like, like, Trizuka is always going to be scary against uh, backliners. 
Just as yeah. much as um the caster. Because suddenly, that little carbon deco over there that couldn't reach you is able to one shot you at almost or above your range. I'm not mm -hmm. really sure. I haven't. Uh, you're uh, has currently alone. You, you're you're alone. You don't have any teammates. You you need to get to safety because you're not going to be able to handle those two snipers by yourself. You're definitely pushing forward a bit too much. Okay. Ouch. Maybe also super jumping a bit too much. Feels to me like like you're you're still struggling with like basic mechanic mechanical stuff. Because if sometimes I see you using your vertical flicks uh, and aiming down while you're doing that. Um, which the the point of the vertical flick is to be able to hit farther. And if you're looking at the ground, then you're not gonna make uh, a very good tra trail for you to swim in. Okay, yeah. So I can confirm it. The um the distance that the trizuka shot traveled. It depends on how, where you're aiming, but if you were aiming straight forward, it traveled the exact same length as the Elite Scope. Mm -hmm. If you're aiming a little yeah. bit upwards, it's going to travel less range, but at the, at the cost of being able to hit over uh, walls pretty easily. It took a little long to react to your teammates pushing on the basket there. I think you would have wanted to push and so same mid. Mm -hmm. Seems like also another thing maybe you're doing that doesn't help you get close to the enemies is that you're you're using your burst, burst bombs maybe a bit too much, and the result of that is that well first off you're not gonna kill anyone because uh, uh, even two I mean I guess two like dead on burst bombs are can kill, but you you don't really seem to be aiming them perfectly on point, uh, and what the burst bombs really the only thing that they're doing is revealing your location and where the enemies should pay attention. And as a carbon roller, you really want to be more sneaky. You don't want to reveal yourself too much. Yeah, you want to, you want to be a living jump scare. That's just how I play it. Yeah. <laughs> carbon rollers are known to be the most dangerous one charging because they are the quickest of the rollers. Yep. The the my, yeah, the my main really suggestion close, so. with the burst bombs, instead of using them as an opener, I would use them as a finisher. Like if you already got a shot on someone, but then they they're starting to get back. Yeah. Especially against the snipers, right? Yeah. The, the use, snipers. Use them, in other words, use them like um like how a uh, splatter shot will use them in uh, two. Yeah. Th thing is, like uh, uh, yeah, the nice snipers, stuff. if you get up close to them and you try to to kill them, and then you like they manage to escape. They're not going to be able to shoot back at you until they've taken enough range to charge. So basically, they, they're going to want to escape as far as, as they can. And the goal of the burst bomb will be to... If, if you got one shot but that wasn't enough and they're like really low and you need to finish the kill, use the burst bomb to, to get the last few percents in and kill them. Especially since the burst bomb has more range than your actual weapon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's basically the point. Because if you do the inverse, basically what you're, you're what you're doing is like telling the snipers to you're look at you from afar. And, and you, then you're trying to hook they stay in the rain. Yeah. You, you don't want to like say hello to the snipers from afar where they can kill you and you cannot. Oh, also one more thing. It's best to use burst bomb after a vertical flick over a horizontal one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because horizontal ones are either going to one-shot or they're not going to do enough damage to um, kill with Burst Bomb if you don't hit the direct. Yep. It's I, very I, rare you'll actually also, hit the seven. What game. I found while playing uh, Carbon Deco is that you, mm -hmm. if you need to hit someone that you're not sure if you're going to be able to get enough range on, go for the vertical flick. But, so, okay, one I thing I, I would accurate. say... I'd, but, yeah. One thing I'd say to that person specifically, because as you can see from the gameplay, they have they still have like some mechanical trouble with with the uh, with the game. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend uh, doing vertical flicks as much, because at their level they might not land them at all. Which is probably the reason why they're using burst bomb so much, because the burst bomb has a large hit okay. radius. So even though it doesn't kill, it's pretty satisfying to just like throw, because you're you're pretty sure to you're pretty much guaranteed yeah. to get some damage. So what I would just say is. Instead of relying on your burst bombs too much, l let me actually take a look at the other uh, carbon roller. Oh, I, just got, I went 11 0. I, nice. What I would probably suggest oh, actually. One actual other thing that I could mention thinking about it. Instead of throwing burst bombs at people who you know aren't weak, 
if you know someone else is, fight, is fighting one of your teammates or just got done fighting them, rather than prioritizing throwing a bomb at like maybe a back line, throw the bomb at the person who has the damage on them. Mm -hmm. So w one thing I would even suggest even more would be if you find yourself using uh, burst bombs too often because they're so satisfying to use and, and stuff, you have the other carbon wall to use, which has the auto bomb and the zip caster, which I think could fit. I mean, could help you learn the playstyle of the carbon a bit more. Because, well, first off, the auto bomb is pretty slow, so it's not gonna like give you something satisfying to just use and basically put yourself in, in danger as much. Um, and also the zip caster kind of encourages you to get up close to the enemies and use your horizontal flick to kill them. So that, that could be something that goes well with you learning to use the carbon. Um, so that, that, that's a good suggestion. I think. Another thing, though, uh, ideally you would want to use vertical flick for a lot of cases because of its range. You can do a horizontal flick and then jump to have a little bit of extra movement and range on. So you okay. just do the flick and then jump immediately. After. So, j just to break the myth, jumping does not give more range, but it can help you. For example, it does. It, no, it do, it does not. It's it's math. It's tested. I, I did some tests. Yeah. It does not. But the, what it yeah, does? No, he is right. Jumping doesn't give you more range, but it does give you more ver more uh, uh, horizontal movement, which essentially like exactly, yeah. makes it a little bit easier to get a little bit more. Yeah. So That's basically, what object sure can do. Oh, I just got three ki I, I just got my first solo wipeout. I just got my first solo wipeout. So, um, about the... Um, okay, I'm the clipping that. ...jumping thing. Uh, basically, here, if, if you just uh, walk up and do a, a, a normal flick, that's gonna go as, as far as this. But if instead what you're doing is you're swimming up to it, then you... I mean, I, I guess I don't know if it works that well. I mean, it can work. Ba basically, what it's gonna do is that you're gonna be able to fire your shot while being above the enemy ink, because because of your jump, you can jump over the enemy ink. So that the, that's the main use. Also, it can give you more range in the specific situation where you're trying to aim above a very tall piece of cover. Otherwise, it's pretty negligible and, and uh, not very. This is very for if when you get a little bit better, but if you're able to time it perfectly. You can do a horizontal flick and a jump at almost the exact same time without doing the vertical. I, I, it's not that hard. I mean, maybe that's just because I'm, I'm pretty mechanically good, but either way. Okay, next it clip, takes, next clip. It takes a decent <laughs> amount of timing. I know the best way to get used to it is to do it out of swimming, but... It's basically you, you just press the two at, at the same time, like a slight delay. Um, but yeah, anyways, next clip also from Ben Ruggen? Okay, from Ben Ruggen with the splash hot on Mako Tar Control. Uh, so let's let me find it. <laughs> Darn, I'm dying. Uh, we are already at 54 minutes. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, You've been here for a while, haven't you? So we have the splash shot on Mako Tower Control. <laughs> they were saying, I was very angry while playing this. Do do the advice dump thing, please. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna do that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, Twitch ad. <laughs> Yesterday's fried chicken. That's a good one. So let me take a look at the team comp. You got some two shooters, one bucket, which is good. Uh, and you got a sniper. They got the dynamo, which is gonna be a pain. Uh, and two blasters, which are also gonna be a pain. Um, I, I can understand if you're being angry at this game. Uh, you gotta wipe Sorry, out. You say the comp is? Uh, the, basically, the enemy team has two rollers and two blasters, which are extremely good at hitting on the tar while being pretty safe. Especially the dynamo is gonna be yeah, those are gonna a pain. Be nice. I can already see the dynamo doing, like, being annoying at the distance. Uh, do they have any ninja squid? Uh, let me take let me take a look. Though. Yeah. They do. They do. Do you guys have any interesting abilities? Nope. Not not. I mean yes, but yeah, whatever. Um. Am I looking at the car? Yes. Okay. Nice nice suction bomb. Pretty good. 
um, don't get in close. They have, they do have the roller, which has the vertical flicks, which are, have some decent range, uh, about as much as you, I think. And then you have the dynamo and the range blaster. You definitely do not want to get anywhere close to them. You want to stick to cover more. Um, yeah. I, I, I guess, because right now I'm thinking, the blasters are, are pretty good at hitting around cover. The, the point is that you can hit from safety and play off of wall a bit more. So what I'm thinking is um, it, maybe the counterplay basically to, to blasters is actually to do the same thing as them, just play off of walls. Because, I mean, they, they can't shoot around walls to hit you if they don't even know that you're there because you're sticking to the wall, right? And I think it's especially yeah. gonna be useful against the range blaster because the range blaster doesn't re doesn't really need to stick to walls that much. I mean, it's a blaster, but yeah, since it's got range, it it doesn't benefit from using walls as much. Uh, that's a, that's a dynamo. Um, so I will say the splatter shot has just like it's right in the middle of the range of the horizontal flick and the vertical flick of the roller. So against a vertical flick, the roller will hit further. Against the horizontal, the shooter will hit further. <laughs> and so I, one thing I'm thinking about this match, uh, based on the compositions, what you really want to be doing also, is... All, I will also mention squid flopping, like taunting right there. <laughs> no, that's fine, that's fine. Focus on the gameplay. <laughs> Careful about talking. As long as the gameplay is good, it's fine. Yeah, I, I think I think you'd really want to be more aggressively covering turf, um, because your sniper and kind of your target are very predictable about how they have to move up. And yeah. these the enemy is very good at uh, handling predictable enemies. Um, yep. And then also, you want to reduce the amount of space that enemies have mm. to shark and to surprise people. So being more aggressive with painting, um, even though you are decent at slaying, um, you really don't want the enemy team to have so much ink control. And you're one of the best yep. uh, players on your team to handle like, that problem. Just looking at the map now, yeah. it, it, it is pretty... That Luna. That, Luna, that Luna, the Luna Neo, has a lot of uh, one-shot <laughs> control. Yep. Um, so yeah, looking at the map, the ink is not too great, indeed. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would probably, in, uh, as suggested, uh, start painting up. And also, so what I was saying before, like my strat of, of sticking close to walls. Actually, if you look at the team comps and you think about like which weapon it's going to be effective against, the rollers and the dynamo. I mean, the yeah, the roller and the dynamo are pretty good at basically covering a whole open space with paint, with, with like damage, so you don't really want to get to them um, in, like visibly. And same thing with the range blaster, it, they're going to be pretty good at, as long as they've got open space, they're going to be able to hit you from very far. So mainly you're, the only thing you're going to still struggle with by, by sticking to walls is the Luna blaster. Definitely. Um, yeah. So try to be more sneaky. The Luna blaster is uh, short range and wide. Radius mm -hmm. threatens with lethal damage, lethal two shot damage, yep. pretty easily. Plus, I mean, just looking at your gear, you have ninja squid, so de definitely try to be more sneaky. I mean, I guess like looking at the map right now, the the ink, the amounts of ink that are there are, is really like uh, you don't have enough ink. Like you see, whenever you you do the rollouts, you just go straight to the tower, which I I guess okay, it's fair now because it's the end of the game and you're just rushing. But like that's what you did the whole game. And if if you're rolling out and you see too much enemy ink, don't just continue rolling out because then if they if you need to go back, then you can't because you don't have enough ink. So just start painting up on your way back. That way you get well more pain control. You get maybe your special charged up and you get more places to use your uh, ninja squid in. <laughs> Ninja Squid is pretty valuable in that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, exerting paint control can also help you uh, in some of the individual fights. Like, like, you should be painting to better prepare for, okay, now my team is pushing. But also in some of those situations where you saw, oh, there's a roller right here that is coming close to me. What you should be doing is painting the area in front of you so they can't swim up close to you uh 
and even like swimming back a little bit. Uh, it seemed like instead you were shooting at them uh, and you didn't quite know your weapon's range, so you missed and then the roller would notice you and then it would swim right next to you in the ink that you hadn't painted because you were trying to shoot at it and then it would get yep. get the come up in Sonya. Um, we, uh, we're already at the one hour mark and we haven't done 10 yet. We're, we're already done seven. Um, I do think a good quota would be nice. like 10 per hour because uh, uh, that way it's going to be three hours and something. Uh, so let's, let's start moving a bit faster. So this one is from Silver Shadow. It is the 52 guy on Mako Splat Zones. They're saying, I don't know why I got killed so many times, uh, but maybe you can see something that I couldn't. Okay. Oh, also, like, just going back to the to the previous clip, they're saying, I got so angry while playing this. Well, you, you squid back the enemy team. So I don't know who should be angry there. But anyways. Uh, so focusing on this game, we have... <laughs> Shooter, one blaster, the big swig, mainly shooters. On your side, we have the big swig, which is better at painting, and then the lunar blaster is, is better at killing. Uh, so let's see how that goes. So, uh, so I, I will killed. say one thing: when normally when you squid, when you go to squid surge, don't stay so close to the top. That makes you vulnerable and visible. Yeah. Okay, so you're wondering why you got killed so much. First off, I'm seeing a lot of bombs, like way too many bombs, and uh... It, look, looking at the, the space around you, you, I don't know if the pain is that good. Like, if enemies pressure you from the front, you can't really go back there. Kind of cornered. Uh, let me go back. Oops. Out. Yeah, I like how it, you're playing it safe right now, though, gathering pink and You're not really looking at your sides, I think. Them. One issue um, that, that might happen is that you get over-focused on a specific op opponent and you're like, oh, I want to kill them. So you're trying to find an approach route uh, like you did there, you tried to climb up the wall. But like at any moment, there, there could have been someone like going down that path and since you weren't at least checking your, your corners before engaging, um, you, you couldn't predict if you were going to get shot in the back. Don't get too focused on one opponent, just focus on the pain in general. Like, see, that's the thing. In, in Splatoon, um, maybe sometimes you're going to get too um, too into a fight, right? You're going to be like, oh, I need to kill that guy. I'm better than him. I'm sure I can I can prove that. Um, problem is that uh, it's a team game, and you don't you don't really need to kill a person that much, right? If if they escape, that's fine, as long as you escape as well. The the main focus should be first off staying alive, uh, second having like enough paint on the map, and then. As, as soon as those two conditions are met, then the fights that you're going to be having, whether you, you finish them off, whether you no, don't finish them off, whether you escape and stuff, you should at least have a, con a conclusive, set satisfactory answer, right? Uh, you don't need to kill a specific person. When, when you see a person, that doesn't mean that you're committed to killing them. You can just abandon the fight and fight someone else somewhere else, where it's safer, right? And that's risky, risky. You don't have any escape routes. Ouch. <clears throat> Taking your fights, a very valuable thing in this game. Um, are you using your splash hole and your special uh, that much? I, okay, splash hole pretty good. Yeah, because that, that's the thing, like the 52 gal is pretty good at being stationary and... Uh, staying in one spot and forcing enemies to move and basically see where they are and, and anticipate that. Um, what I mainly one see you doing... It does take quite a bit of ink, so I would suggest a little bit of sub saver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so like the thing you did there, you threw a wall and then you just proceeded to go past it, like way past it. What was the purpose of the wall, right? The purpose of the wall yeah. is to... You just basically just wasted a decent chunk of your ink tank. Yep. Because, I mean, I mean, if you were gonna go into the fight anyways, like, yeah, as... J just don't waste your ink, your ink tank on the wall if you're not gonna use it. Just save it for the fight that you're gonna go in. And what you should actually do is just put the wall down and stay behind the wall. 
because that is the thing. See, if, first off, Splatoon is not necessarily about like killing the first person you see, but more so, even more so, whenever you're playing game modes like Splat Zones, you really don't care about killing people as long as you get the zone. So yeah. Someone's coming up. On the left. Okay, good. Yeah, on the left side. Dude, the zone is playing pretty, pretty nice. I would just put the wall down because uh, I see some people sneaking up, like uh, trying to get on the zone. Just put a wall down and use the special, exactly. Maybe what, what do you start doing right, right about now? If you see that there aren't really any people like behind the zone, um, then you, you, you need to start wondering okay, where are they if they're not in front of me if I don't see them? Maybe they're using the flanks. Ooh, that was kind of weird. Movement right there. But yeah, um, j just start thinking about the flanks that the enemies might take to stab you in the back. Um, don't don't stay. Don't focus too much on either killing or the zone. Just do the switcheroo whenever it's more important to do one or the other. Uh, I wonder if you should also be performing more flanks because you. I don't. I don't know if 52 how good that is at flanking. I 52 is good at flanking if you're able to put down a wall and then establish a good spot behind the enemy team to flank and mm -hmm. give more than one person. If you're going to give one person, that's usually not bad, I would say. Yep. So, next clip. Uh, 96 gal on hammerhead tower control. Bye, Giriko. Uh, they're saying 96. this match was either lost due to a massive mistake in overtime or we threw harder than a baseball pitcher in the World Series. I'm really curious on what went wrong here because I thought we were playing great. Any feedback is appreciated. Let's take a look. So yeah, even though you you might be playing great, uh, playing great doesn't necessarily lead to wins. I mean, it depends. Yeah. Like, what are you playing great at? Are you are you doing a great solo performance? Are you doing a like great team play? Uh, but still getting outmatched by the team composition. What is great? Define that better. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you might have, you might not have uh, died a lot. You might have gone into a lot of um, situations where you won those like necessary fights. But that does not necessarily mean that your team is winning those fights. Like when they have to take it instead of you. Uh, so they got. I mean, you cannot say that yet, but that's to be to the full replay. The Dark Roller and Blaster. As a 96, I would probably be trying to get rid of... I don't know why you're looking back when being on the tower. That's not necessarily a good thing. Um, mm -hmm, let me think, let me think. Uh, so yeah, I, I think as the 96, we, you have some of the most range. I would probably be focusing on the two long-range options on the enemy team, namely the, the Squelchers and the Range Blaster, to basically get them prevent them from focusing on the tower, especially the range blaster, that's probably going to be your main focus because it has pretty good tools against the tower. Uh, of course, uh, I think he isn't actually the best person to be riding the tower in this team composition. Um, it's yeah. kind of difficult because there's not really a true backliner in this team comp. Um, mm. The main thing is, it's completely okay to step off the tower for a couple of seconds when it's getting dangerous and just hold the tower in one position until your team can help you push up. You don't just have to stay on the tower and you die, you can jump off. Ouch. <clears throat> uh, in the first part of the game, also while riding the tower, you were kind of sharking when you could have been painting ahead of the tower yeah. to make it easier for your teammates to defend yourself. What I was even gonna say about like painting is that um, you could have thrown your um, your sub, the sprinkler, on that side, on, on this checkpoint, because that, that would have painted a pretty big zone, and since it's not in the view of the mm -hmm. enemies, they, they won't necessarily shoot it as fast, so it's gonna make their approach to the tower pretty linear. I also don't think so. I, first off, I don't think that you want to get on the tower when the blaster is firing at it because that's pretty dangerous. You, you want to focus on this, like killing the blaster first. Uh, and the other thing that your weapon should be pretty good at is 
basically defending the, the tower while being behind it, right? On, on the floor behind it, because it does have pretty good range. Uh, you, you mainly want to be behind the tower and use your sprinklers, refresh them to, to get some pain behind you. Um, and then use the ink back when appropriate to defend the tower. Um, basically, con basically control the amount of pain that you, that you put for your team and prevent the enemy team from doing the same back to you. Because you do have uh, tools to paint more and tools to prevent the enemy team from painting. Uh, and basically, see, like, if you do a push and it doesn't succeed all the way through, at least if you have enough paint on the map like you do have now in mid, it's gonna be harder for the enemies to to play in mid, and then it's gonna be easier for you to get the tower back and start another push again. <clears throat> no, I I would say that like. Um, the Julie Squelchers do, like, they are kind of better at killing. Uh, ooh, 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 watch out for the roll of the... Okay, um, the Julie Squelchers are probably better at killing because they do have, um, the rolls, whereas your weapon is pretty slow and it's, it, it has better pain, basically, but also very low ac accuracy. Wipeout, pretty good. Let me think. What would be a good way to use to secure the push? Hmm. You guys got some specials. The tri strike, the wave breaker. Okay. I could jump to your teammate that's farthest back right there instead of swimming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plus, like, another thing, like, about. about just staying in the back and painting up is that if you do that because first off you have great tools to paint and painting is gonna charge your special and your special is kind of the most uh, useful one on target control so you definitely do not want to fight too much and die too much because your, your special is valuable to your team so, like see there you had a special if you if you were able to use it by staying safer and not necessarily taking the flank route uh, you could have used it and uh, stopped that push real quick. <clears throat> you're, you, you're kind of the backliner in this match, basically. Yeah, and then you towards went for a flank. The yeah, towards the end there, you tried to take that flank, and you went around, but then you didn't finish. You just went right in front of them where they could see you. Um... You were going to go for that flank option. You should have committed to going all the way around and showing up behind them. I think. The, the the issue whenever you go into a flank is that, well, the the point of going into a flank is that you're getting into enemy ink. You're getting in danger. It's it's a dangerous option that can lead to good results. Whenever you're like uh, in overtime and you need to stop the tower really quick, you don't actually need to flank them. That it's not like you need to pull some crazy strats. You just really need to fire at the tower for a few moments and eventually since they're like since they're all gathered bunched up on the tower and and they're trying to get into your base which is already well painted with your paint they're not gonna have an easy time and eventually the the push will just die because that that's how the game mode works you, do, you don't need to pull some crazy strats to get people off of tower getting people off of tower uh, will happen naturally like the, the staying on tower is really hard as long yeah, as especially since one thing I consider is the tower moves pretty quickly. So mm -hmm. if they're advancing to get to you closer, faster, then you're advancing to them. They're going to get into your range while you stay out of theirs, even if you just need to slip it backwards while right in front of them. Yep. Like the, the tower moves pretty fast and also staying on tower is really hard to do for a long time. So you're all, so if you're on the tower, you're also going to get down of the tower really fast and the, the the time that you could have used to get them off the tower really fast before the tower moves too fast uh the the time that you went in the flank was basically enough time for the tower to move really fast and and get they make them take the lead okay um next flip on undertow clamlets by none other i think than neon wyvern yeah. that's okay. me okay that is you we have two clips of this, one with the Custom Junior and one with the bullet points. 
So you're saying I need some tips on how to play Undertow spillway combats in the map mode specifically? It feels like regardless of if I'm a frontliner or backliner, spend a lot of time meticulously pushing up, and then the enemies do that for free. Basically, they just fault in. Anyway. Um, so I yes, pretty snowbally. <laughs> Yeah, well, while I saw the message, I was thinking about, like, why they may be able to waltz in, as you were saying. And, yeah, my, my main thought, instantly, was that if you're on the glass, you can't hit below it. And that's a pretty good path. And, um, the, the person that, I, I forgot, maybe was RD? I'm not sure. But, yeah, someone sent you a Twitter video of, um, basically, yes, if you are on the glass and yeah. you shoot, Basically, you're not going to be able to cover down there. And someone that just wants to go in, they're going to have an easy time getting in safely, actually. Because I don't think in this game when there's even a piece of cover there. So you can just, like, hug the wall and be, boom, straight to the basket instantly. Um, so I, I'm thinking, but basically, now my, in, like, my main suggestion would not be to necessarily stay on the glass. It would be to kind of uh, be more versatile about your placement. Basically... From the glass up to back there on the ramp and depending on if you're hitting if you're on the glass you're hitting people around here if you're getting a bit back you're hitting people that are trying to get in from down there and if you're getting on the ramp you're trying to prevent people from getting to the podium to send their their shots uh custom junior is right there okay pretty good first push okay uh, team composition, how is it going? You have two, two flings, a splat junior, and a blaster. They have some pretty good close yeah. range options, I think. Plus, the wall can, can have some bit of defense and zone control. Um, hmm. I'll say flings is really good for close range so long as you don't get a little bit greedy and jump when you shouldn't jump. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. I'm realizing there that it was pretty obvious that I could have saw on the map somebody had a power plant behind us. Yeah, one thing, okay, so you know how usually I never look at the scoreboard and I, I usually be like, oh, why did you push up? And then I'm like, oh, okay, because the scores are like, you need to score really quick. Uh, the one mode, though, where I'm trying to learn not to do that is Clown Blitz, because I, I swear, if you do not pay attention to when the enemy ha the enemies have a lot of clams on them, they're gonna like instantly knock you off. It's 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 crazy. So you do need to pay attention. Like, oh, they have uh, nearly a power clam. I do need to start paying more, right? D don't. If you see lots of clam on the enemy scoreboard, just start painting the map. Just start defending, setting up, setting up good places for you to shoot from. Don't focus yeah. as much on uh, collecting clams yourself. Every, every now and then, I want to say like every maybe like 15 seconds that go by. You want to check up and see what number it says on the scoreboard. If it says eight or more, that means they have the ability to get like a power claim quite quickly. Ooh, true. Yeah, I, I usually don't look at the at the little number thing. I just look at the amount of clams on, on the little personal icons. But yeah, indeed, like, you can look at it. Like you said. Yeah, it's suggested if you need, if you just need to get a quick glance and to see figure out how many the enemy team has for total, like total. It's best to just look right at that number. But if you if you're like looking for someone specifically, like let's say they have a brush on their on their on their team, which they do, it's best to like maybe check that to see if that brush has like seven clams at that moment. I mean, whichever is most comfortable to you, really, because uh, usually I just stick to looking at the the clam icons because my my brain can kind of do the math, uh, right? It's it's. In a pretty easy layout for you to guess like oh they can make a power clam like this it, it just depends on, on what is easier for you if you do prefer to just take a quick glance at, at the clam icons and see oh lots of clam icons need to start being defensive or maybe the number is what makes you go defensive whichever is easier for you to interpret and and use for your brain well during a very fast-paced battle basically this, this last minute was particularly painful because they, they just had paint control all over our basket. I was like, how how do I even approach them? Yeah, and so still one, really know one thing I would probably do is um, start painting for special. Because the, the special could be very useful at holding oh. them off. 
because the wave breaker is, is like if they want to keep spamming clams uh, as you usually see i love how clam blitz is the one mode where even pros will just stand there not moving like dummies and be easy to shoot at like that's so interesting of a of a thing but if you have the wave breaker and they do not move and they just keep spamming the clams they're gonna get killed eventually so they they're gonna need to stop sending the clams Especially yeah, since you do have to need to, you do have to take your your uh, thumb off the B, off the B button to jump, instead to like throw the clam. Yeah, exactly. Yes, unless you use the L button, yeah. that also works. But nobody uses the L button. Change yeah, my you, mind. Wait, wait, what do you mean? You can use the L button to throw clams. That's that's a thing. No way. Too, I think. Wait a second. Hold on. And I I guess actually it would be pretty smart to use that button because figures if you're throwing clams you're not gonna get into your ink anyways, right? So you you'd better have the ability to jump than have the ability to swim while you're throwing the clams, right? I think. Wait. So how? Wait. So how many things does the L button apply to? Is it more than just the clams? I have no clue. I I don't think I've ever tried it for it throwing the eggs in Salmon Run. Uh, but I don't think it works because otherwise I would use that. Probably, maybe. What did you say, Ray? Um, well, thank well, you for teaching me something. Also, the case now. that the custom junior has uh, most of the paint Ooh. on that uh, team, so uh -huh. uh, when the enemy team has the ink control, it it's really you that wants to be, you know, you want to be poking with your grenade to uh, find where they are and mm -hmm. covering their uh, route options. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I guess the good thing about yourself is that. You go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I had a tricky time figuring out how to do that with something like the junior, because in order to paint, I have to get pretty close it's, to it's the enemy ink to paint the enemy. Yeah, I think I'm in that sure. particular uh, team composition, the fault is, was kind of like once they already had that control, it was really, really difficult to bring it back. Mm -hmm. So it would have been important to not allow them to get to that point and to recognize that your team composition really relies on you making sure that doesn't happen in the first place. Yep. Um, torpedo. So, um, Torpedo does paint also pretty well, which is pretty good at charging your, your special. Um, it doesn't, like, and here's the thing, you don't necessarily need it to paint at all. As long as you throw it, because uh, I saw you sometimes throw it, like, in places where it would just end up uh, rolling on the ground and not doing a lot of damage or a lot of th things, uh, just throw it up in the path that the enemies will take. Even if there's no enemies, right? It's at least going to be painting in the area where it matters most. And usually there's there's obviously going to be like someone nearby enough that it's going to start uh, auto aiming, right? Because like the the range on the lock on is pretty pretty good, like as you can see there. Yeah, I've noticed. Uh, plus, like, at the time that you throw it, uh, people are going to be swimming, they're going to be moving, so they're, they're going to be getting in and out of the range, and you're going to have more chances to hit. Uh, and add to that the fact that Undertow is a pretty small map, add to that the fact that there are four players that you can poten potentially lock onto, uh, that's at least, if it doesn't paint, it's going to provide distraction. Which is pretty good, it's, pre it's pretty good for you to get in then, because it's a small map, so you're going to get up close to them and be able to kill them pretty pretty fast. Um, yeah, torpedo is probably the way to go. Like, in order to paint the enemy ink, I have to get close to the enemy ink. So I throw a torpedo mm -hmm. first to see, am I gonna get sharked if I get close? And then once the torpedo confirms or denies that, then I start painting up. Okay, so we have second game. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is the ball point from you again on the same map, same mode. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, one, six, one, quick, one quick tip that I'm going to mention since I heard the word ballpoint. Um, I looked at I looked at it a little bit. The ballpoint's uh, like short fire, short range fire, is the exact same paint range with just a little bit more range on like the actual damage as the Splash Out Junior, as well as the same kill time as the Splash Out Junior. On the uh, long range firing mode, it's just a bit more than the squeezer range, both paint and on and on damage wise. As well as it takes yeah. four shots to kill for that too. I I main ball point, so I do you know? I think I think it's DPS is way higher than the junior as well. Yeah. So yeah, I'm staying 
I think going on glass at the beginning is fine, because they don't have clams, uh, and they can get some picks from some unsuspecting people, but then getting off glass afterwards is probably the play. Okay. <clears throat> we'll probably start, yeah, throwing the clam to a teammate, because you don't necessarily want to keep it. Uh, let me take a look at the team comp. You have, uh... Yeah, you, you are kind of the most range option, including the... Um, the blah blah -er. so you do want to stay back more and send your power clams basically to your teammates on um, like the clash blaster and the splash <clears throat> uh, let me take a look at the map real quick Whoop, map. Uh, map is looking all right for now Um, hmm. Have you considered using your fizzies? Uh, I think in this match I don't use them very much. Yeah, because I guess it could be pretty pretty useful, especially on this map, because um, it like you basically have two straightaways which are separated by a ridge, and if you throw the um, the fizzy bomb down there, it's gonna pretty much cover the whole the the whole pathway. Yeah, it's pretty good for when I'm behind the, the pillar because I don't have a good Ooh, sight line over the hill. And I think I forgot that in this match. Should have been using Fizzy's more. Because, yes, especially if someone comes up to you through a path, um, you're going to have a hard time necessarily aiming at them uh, or killing them. Like, maybe with the short-range mode, if, if you if you react pretty fast, but having a fizzy bomb preemptively is always better at preventing people from getting in. thing I see is that you're not using your uh, inkjet too much and I do think that the inkjet would provide good um, um, it would allow you to get into places where you're gonna be safe and where you're gonna be able to fire from and provide basically to try to kill the enemies where your teammates are flinging the, the additional clams yeah I probably should have used it when I was on top of class mm -hmm. especially on this map I think uh, I think Inkjet is pretty good because you have plenty, plenty of pathways to get um, to get some height, and you don't necessarily have like ag again like if you take a look at the way the map is structured, you can get you can totally get on glass if you plop your Inkjet like um, if you stick to the wall under the glass, activate your Inkjet there, go past the glass and then do a jump. You can get on basically get on glass and fire from there at the basket, which is pretty good. Uh, whoop. Yeah, I think um, I think you really have to be in glass in the other backline position. I take behind the the pillar. You don't really get a good downwards angle to secure and block off chip point. If they are um, probably a fizzy bomb would be um, something I would consider to paint back the zone and prevent additional enemies from getting in um, in the pathway. <clears throat> Make sure they're behind you and get that. That's okay. Acceptable. Mm. Okay, pretty good. Ouch. Yeah, okay, so as you can see there, you use your inkjet, but then you just start in going down, which doesn't really help you aim with the inkjet. It's, it's gonna be harder to hit people if you get down. <clears throat> You, actually, with the inkjet, you, you do have some pretty good amount of range. You don't really need to get that uh, close to enemies. You don't really need to follow them. If they're get, getting down, you can just stay where you are. Your moving should really only be used if they're getting too close and if you need to back off. But if you're backing off, you're not shooting. You, you, either you're shooting or you're moving. Not two at once, I think. <clears throat> like, inkjet allows you to get in a good spot, and once you're in the good spot, you don't need to move anymore. Yeah. 
<laughs> Especially if you know the map layout, you can find a couple areas where you can get higher than normal and not get shot by things like a splatter shot. <clears throat> yeah, okay. inkjet. Oh uh, gosh, I struggle with inkjet a lot. It always feels like I'm way higher, and I'm like, ha ha ha, you can't reach me. But then, like yeah, something, yes, yeah, yeah, as short range high. as a splatter shot gets me, and I'm like, oh. So I'm still trying so, to learn. Especially inkjet. rollers. You might not think a roller could get you with inkjet, and especially with the fact that they, they can one-shot from pretty decently far away, depending on which roller it is. You might think you're going to stay safe and just get one-shot out of nowhere. One thing I might suggest with inkjet... ...where you guys controlled mid, and one thing I think I would have liked to see is you get on enemy class because the enemy team wouldn't really have much of an answer for you being on their own glass. And you would be able to control so much of the area around their basket. I think that would have helped uh, prolong that first push where you guys broke the basket is if you got on there and just really harassed them and held them down. That is an interesting yeah. idea. I will As, try that. Especially with the bullpoint, like point, that. actually, because uh, the bullpoint has some range. It has the range mode where you can paint uh, at range from the safety of, of enemy's glass. That way you can basically uh, secure your push and improve it. And then it can also defend itself if someone sneaks up on it because of the short range mode. And yeah, that's why I love ballpoint so much. Stuff because like that. A lot of other long range weapons, I'm like, ah, somebody got close to me. What do I do? With ballpoint, I'm like, Ha -ha. And even, Somebody call an ambulance, but not for me. <laughs> to add to that even more, like so you have the, the long range, the short range, you have the fizzy bomb to create confusion near the enemy's basket, and if someone does get up close to you and you're like, hmm, this weapon I'm not going to be able to handle, say, uh, I, I don't know, say a bucket, right? You're, you're, you're like, hmm, maybe I won't be able to kill them as effectively. So let me plop as, uh, my uh, inkjet preemptively to get a little bit more distance and maybe try to at least uh, just slow them down and make them waste time while your team continues to push or maybe even kill them right um, yep. and I guess a another suggestion I could give about the inject is I do also personally struggle with uh, getting kills with it because uh, you do need to have pretty on-point aim so what you can just do instead is just use the paint that it provides so you, you stay kind of higher uh, from safety. It's not entirely safe because again, you can get shot down as you mentioned But if you paint in between you and the enemies, it's gonna make them uh, Not want to get as close and basically you're gonna have more time to annoy them with paint That's, That's what one thing that not a lot of people do. like think about just using the splash damage of the uh Ink giant Yep <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's what I so... tried to do in this in that game. I was I, the one time I used inkjet, I was using it mostly as cover fire for my allies as they were trying to push the basket. And we didn't oh. have any clams, but oh no, that way. was there the idea. One quick thing that I want to give you to like think about, as I mentioned, there are certain areas that are like just high enough so you can get above them with the inkjet. One small example is on is on um. Hagglefish Market, you know the little middle area where the Rainmaker is and the and the uh, tower is. Yeah. You know those boxes on like the left and right of the Rainmaker of the Rainmaker yeah. and tower. You can just sit above those with um, inkjet, and you have enough range to shoot anyone who's down below. But most things are not gonna have enough range to kill you instead. Yep. In in inkjet and um, Zipcaster are uh, two specials that you need to get, get creative with your movement, basically. Uh, they can go into yeah. some yeah. places you wouldn't think they would be able to. Um, anyways, we need to, example, we need to move on now. Market thing that I mentioned, so many clips. especially well with the slaughter deco. Uh huh. Uh, so uh, battle replay from Snow on Undertow Spillway Tower Control with the Flingza. We also have another one with the Flingza afterwards. Is it from the same person? Yes, on um, Brian Columbus. So they, they're saying, an absurd match I had, and I am mad we lost this. Okay. Uh, two buckets. Uh, we got rasters and shooters. Pretty equal. It's okay, range. Snow. Undertow makes me mad, too. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Getting too close to the auto bomb there. Flank option. Oh. 
I nev I never really played Flingza that much. I'm I'm surprised that it has um Ink Mine. I forgot. Interesting. Yeah, it has Ink Mine, which normally you want to use that as an alarm for. Let's say your attack, like you're mainly focused on one area, right? You want to place that in areas where you might get flanked to use it as an alarm. In most cases. <laughs> I know sometimes I like using Ink Mine with uh, weapons such as, uh, um, like, Undercover, for example, um, as a poking tool. I'll leave an Ink Mine down near where I might start a fight, and then I'll play around it, but not where it is. That way they might walk into it and take combo damage. Mm Um, so there, I see that you're under the ledge, and you're trying to hit people above the ledge with the, um, with the vertical shot. I don't think it's necessarily the best play, because the vertical shot has more range. Uh, but here, what you're looking for is not range. You're looking to hit above the cover. Uh, here is actually the time I would recommend jumping. Um, the best option would probably be to do uh, a horizontal flick uh, and jump after you started it. That way, you can basically ha have good coverage over the ledge. And make sure that you hit anyone on there. And maybe you can even get a one shot. Uh, here, the question is, why are you jumping on tower? I, I don't think you necessarily had to if you wanted to get rid of the people on the tower. You, you could have totally just done a horizontal flick and kill the people on it. Without need. Like, you don't need to roll over people to kill them. Yeah, one thing not a lot of people think about is that it's not a flat roller or a dino. It's a hybrid of the two. Mm -hmm. You want to use the vertical flick as if it's a dynamo. You want to use the horizontal flick as if it's a flat roller. If you see someone up close that you know you can get the one-shot range with a flat roller, that's going to one-shot range with a flink up. If you know you can one-shot range with a dynamo then you can fly on a vertical, then that means you can do it with the um, flink the too. The um, rolling on the tower would mainly be used... Um as a last resort option in my opinion, you really don't want to do that otherwise. Also, I, I do think that you're using way too many vertical flicks, like, don't don't sleep on your horizontal flick, it's very good. Yeah, ver verticals are good for painting, but it doesn't look like you're trying to paint in any of these. You're trying to harass and get The horizontal splats. flick can kill, it kills pretty good. It, it, it does one shot from the... Decent range. You don't have to get as close as the carbon. So you, yes, just like a normal spot <clears throat> Nah. Oh no 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 no. Those are. Don't roll. Don't roll. Don't roll. Okay. So okay. Here's a thing I would recommend. If maybe you're focusing too much on killing and maybe that's why you you keep rolling because again it's all about like getting feedback on on you, the action you're doing and and getting some positive uh yeah positive feedback basically. so what you're doing is you're rolling because it's pretty satisfying to get killed with this um but it doesn't mean that it's the, the best option necessarily and it doesn't yeah if you focus on killing too much you're you're gonna end up doing some weird stuff that doesn't really help or contribute to the game mode at all um, here what I would just do is mainly paint over the tower with my horizontal flick. You don't have to get on the tower, you can just stand below it and uh, be annoying basically. K kind of like uh, like the dynamo does, right? It, it just stays at range, it uses the horizontal flick and just rains down on the tower and makes everyone annoyed. That's kind of what you need to do. But you can't do that with the vertical flick over the horizontal. The horizontal is for when you're much closer. Yeah, well, that, that's the point, like, because they're, they're getting so close anyways that they can climb on it, and they usually just want to climb on it. But that, that's the thing, if there are people on the tower, you don't actually want to climb on it, because by the time that you actually get on the tower, either you're going to have to wait to land and then do a, a horizontal flick, which is going to net you some, some guaranteed kills, but also it's going to have a delay, or you instantly start shooting, and then you're gonna have a slow shot that you're probably gonna miss, and it's not gonna work as great. Dude, Instead, what you really should you do here. is not get on the tower and just fire up the tower while being down from it. <clears throat> I I said you guys were getting staggered. We actually did a good job of being safe and waiting for your team. You should be painting for special, I think, right now. 
Mm -hmm. Ah, true, because your special is pretty good at, at getting people Plunza off the ground. does armor. have enemy tiles. Hmm. Oh, and Plunza is one of the better weapons to be aggressive with enemy tiles with. You want to be up close more with enemy tiles on Plunza than uh, further back. Yeah, I hate. <laughs> I hate to say, I hate to be the one to suggest ten missiles more, but <laughs> you might. You only Why? use it like twice. You, you might be point. playing flings are wrong if if you're only using your special toys. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the, it's not necessarily wrong to suggest to use the special. I mean, the reason people hate it is because it's good, and it still is good. Right. It, it's been nerfed, right, in terms of like the spammability, but it still has the same use cases, and and get, it's still gonna get people off the tower. Definitely. Um, so yes. And even uh, if it's so not gonna get people off the tower, you can use it to quite easily take a couple of um take with flings, as I mentioned. So I do have this next game also from Snow with the Flingza again. It is uh, on Brine and Crumblitz this time. Okay. Okay. We do have some range. I saw a Tri Stringer. Some decent amount of range in this team composition. Uh, I'm wondering if the Nautilus has Ninja Squid. Nope. No Ninja Squid. <clears throat> oh, so Crumblitz, interesting. Um, one thing though that I am thinking about regarding this map is that I, the approach option to the to the enemy's base is pretty linear actually, um, which is it's interesting because people often complain that the stages are too linear, right? Which I I don't necessarily agree. I mean they are linear. Like, yes, indeed. There there's no they are linear, but they're not like literally a straight line like some people want to describe them as. Uh, though this one, so usually maps have a pretty tight mid, but whenever you're you're yeah. going past mid, you have multiple, like basically the pathways that the enemies can take to roll out into mid, are the same that you can take to roll into their base and have multiple approach options to their basket or, or any other objective. Here on this map though, I, it feels like it's the inverse. You have, I mean like you have to drop down to go into mid, so basically mid is not as tight, it's pretty it's pretty open. Um, but then if you wanna go into the enemy's base, you only have one way really. <laughs> you really need to have a lot of firepower. That's that's how you're gonna get in. Um, so I figure having the ink mines uh, the ink mines would be pretty useful if you do wanna get in more. Getting flanked from behind. Oh my gosh. My brain is abandoning me. <laughs> um, <coughs> I do think you should pay more attention to your surroundings, because um, the enemies can drop down from basically anywhere on the ramp. Uh, on, on their side of the map. So if you do stick too close to, to their side of mid, you're probably gonna get... Uh, Splatted like that roller just splatted you here. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, also, I think the comments for this game were different. So let me check. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Wipeout, interesting. Uh, Flinga, Brian. No, 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 no. Oh my god! Uh, and here's one of the first times ever playing Crumblitz and was pretty fun. Uh, but I know I could improve. Hmm, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Mm. I do think you're using way too many vertical flicks, just um, focus on painting a bit more. Is it, yeah, especially here if you're wanting. I mean, I guess it's fine. Uh, wait, no. no but, <clears throat> yeah, use use vertical flex to paint, but it seems like you're painting a lot of areas that are already painted, and, and sometimes it's because 
Wait. You're vertical plugging and it takes so slow that by the time you have to shoot your shot, that area is already... Shouldn't you rather yeah. ping with the, with the horizontal flick? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I kind of play a lot of the big swigs, so to me, like... Well, like, it, it doesn't seem like the horizontal flick, because it's slower, right? So, I guess it does have a better ink trail, and it's especially good if you do want to swim up uh, it and, and get close to the enemies. But the thing is, I assume since the ver the horizontal flick is much faster, you can throw multiple ones in the same amount of time that we throw the horizontal one. So you can basically paint more. I would I would assume. I think the idea is that better for for painting uh, something in front of you, whereas yeah. the horizontal flick is better for painting a large area a lot quicker. If you want to like, take the, should, the should area different. away from the opponent. Because right now what I'm seeing is that the, your your teammates are fighting in mid. And they're ca they're kind of having like orange paint uh, 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 under their feet. So what I would just do is use my um, horizontal flicks just to paint uh, for them. So that way they can win their fights, and then you can you can get in and get a clown in. Um, plus the good thing, if if someone rushes you, since you're not locked into the the long animation of the the horizontal flick. Uh, the vertical flick, I mean, uh, you're gonna be able to react much faster and, and adapt your plan depending on what the, the person does getting close to you. Yeah, that's definite. That is a definite. Like, like I would probably, if I if I were to play this Flingza, I would only use the vertical flick if I see someone and I'm like, I'm gonna splat them. Like, I'm gonna stay at range and I'm gonna splat them now. And I have a clean line of sight, and I do that, and I kill them. If I don't know that I'm gonna, it's that's what the ver the vertical flick is for. It's like a dynamo. You need to kill people with it, or at least be you annoying. Kill people from a distance, basically. Yeah, do, but don't There's use it as a general tool. Horizontal, so you go ahead and kill them with the vertical. Yeah, I think. Yeah, you kind of you can switch kind of between a dynamo and a splat roller. Um, I mean, obviously it's baked into the weapon, but like, if you, you should sometimes take like a backline position and mm -hmm. use your long ho horizontal big painting swing to yeah. like, pick up uh, mid. Again, you're half a dynamo, half a splat roller. Don't forget about the splat roller part. Um... So yes, okay, uh, what do we have afterwards? We have two brush games from... Yeah, if you're Action. gonna do the horizontal flick, you want to do it from a safe position. I think that's the the key vertical thing flick. you might want to focus on. The horizontal flick is the splat roller. The vertical flick is the dynamo. Yeah, people get them mixed up sometimes. <clears throat> um, so okay, two brush games on Mincemeat Rainmaker, both by Takin. Uh, so let's check them. Uh, first, uh, no, okay, uh, comments, they're saying, I'm trying to learn inkbrush. I know I made a lot of mistakes, I would like to help, I would like help pinning all of them down, okay. Okay, let me take a look at this, because I like playing brush oh. a lot, I could probably give a lot of tips. <laughs> uh, the main, the main tip I would, uh, suggest, first off the bat, is use your splat bombs, your weapon has range. The splat bomb is the range yeah, part of the you weapon. Use the splat bomb. The splat bombs are going to be a problem solver for a lot of situations that are not uh -huh. Like honestly, you know, <laughs> whenever I, I play the ink brush, um, you can pretty much say I I basically play the splat bomb with a little side of ink brush uh, paste, basically. Um, you want to use your, your splat bomb to poke at a distance, to stay safe, analyze where the enemies are at. Uh, you, use your main weapon to basically paint uh, from up a ledge uh, over the enemies, right? If they're trying to get in, you stay up uh, on the ledge, you stay safe. And you use your, your brush to paint and get your special. And then use the special to basically displace the enemies. Combo that with like two bombs, right? You, you do the combo of throwing bomb. Using special, throwing another bomb. It's pretty, pretty good. And then your your brush, your main weapon is mainly gonna be if you try to sneak up on people. But, but you, you definitely need to set that up correctly if you don't want to get shot while you're sneaking up on them. Uh, okay, so team com team com team com. You do have quite a bit of range, so yeah, indeed it's gonna be hard um, if you want to get. In. I also got a Tetris. I think you might want to pay 
close attention to your Tetras and see when they're diving in and go with them oh, and yeah. when the Rush fights that they really take. Nice to play around Tetra with. Yeah. Because the Tetra can be really good. The main problem with the Tetras is that I, I do think that most Tetra users, I assume, rely on their rolls a bit too much because that's the main gimmick. Um, and the problem with the rolls is that it allows them to get some some great positions to kill, but also it's very predictable and slow and they get, get they can get killed. So if you throw a splat bomb near them, right, you might help improve their chance of actually uh, playing the tetras well and getting killed. Even then, you don't even need to throw a splat bomb. Since both weapons are pretty quick, you could just move around and, dist and distract them, or if they're not focused on you, get like, right behind them quickly and splat them just as quickly. I do think it's been pretty good for now. Uh, scores are looking uh, nice. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, they're, both they're pretty fast, aren't you? Especially permanent ink brush. Mm. Which, speaking of permanent ink brush, that's one thing you want to do with permanent ink brush. Oh, not per actually, wait, I'm calling it permanent again. I mean, uh, ink brush novel. Um, if this you is the normal one. Place a mine down where you might get into a fight, no, and then this play is the normal around one. the mine. Yeah, this is the normal. That, that, that's the normal uh, inbrush. Yeah, that's the normal one, but I'm just mentioning that. If they do get into playing with the no they'll play around the ink mine when you're fighting. Mm, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. One thing, you, you had your spec ready, and then you just picked up the uh, ring maker. Because, um, probably should have I want to play. Yeah, really, like, especially there, you super jump back in. Uh, as an inkbrush, you're really not gonna do anything. Like, if you keep super jumping back, you're not gonna be able to do much of anything. Uh, just because, I mean, it's an inkbrush, it's it's logical. It, it, if, yeah, if you, don't you don't have someone, don't, like, you camping you... You use what you have where you are, and then go back. Go back, go back to uh -huh. Like, I, if you super jump to someone, like, the only chance you're gonna have to win this encounter and actually slap them if if they camp you in a very predictable manner <laughs> and they just stay right on the location where they're trying to camp you without preparing a splat bomb or anything. And this is not gonna happen very consistently. So mainly you wanna just get back normally uh, into like just roll out and maybe paint a bit of, of your spawn and that way by the time you arrive in, in mid you can have a special ready and do the, um, the splat bomb combo where you throw a splat bomb, special, another splat bomb. And yeah, and it, like, especially like the great thing about this, um, um, you know how like people say that the, um, the subs and maybe the specials sometimes they're not necessarily for killing, they're just for displacing or for poking, right? They're they're not necessarily just saying like it can kill, but it's not a killing. Like right, the splat bomb is not necessarily a killing special, especially even less the suction bomb. Uh, people will say that they're for poking. The thing is. That's because it's very predictable and easy to escape. Now, let's ramp that up and have two suction bombs, one next to the other. The person is going to be confused. Which one explodes first? Where am I supposed to run? Uh, in which direction? If I run this way, will I have another suction bomb greeting me in that location, right? And I'll just add three of them. And then you're, pro you're probably going to get at least one kill, maybe two kills. So having more stuff on the map at once doesn't necessarily increase, it doesn't necessarily double your chances of getting a splat, it actually increases them exponentially. So say you, you do the combo, you're gonna have two splat bombs plus a kill wheel. The kill wheel is gonna make them move side to side, and if you threw the splat bombs on either side, you're gonna get a kill, guaranteed. And add to that the fact that you're playing Rainmaker, the Rainmaker is gonna have no chance of surviving this. <laughs> This is like, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. If, if you're seeing the enemies have a Rainmaker and maybe you're in overtime, you're panicking, don't super jump in. That's the worst thing you could do. Just go back, roll out normally, charge your special, do the combo, they're dead. They have no chance of surviving this. If you just get on pretty quickly because you know they're vulnerable, you can just rush, um, rush, I'm gonna attack them. Do, do, do. Let me let me let me do. Let me do. Uh, last match, I really liked how you played the objective. You uh, when you had the rainmaker, you let your team go in front of you, and when you didn't have the rainmaker, you were going up ahead of the rainmaker and also checking behind you and just doing a very good job of being a very fast scout. And... Yep. 
Okay, so, okay. Guard. Be before I move on to their second clip, just let me show this. That Rainmaker is pretty much dead there. They have not really many options, right? Like two Splat bomb, Splat Bombs behind them, that's gonna do like 30, maybe 60 damage. They're gonna have some additional chip damage from the Kilo Well, they're gonna need to move from side to side, and then, oh, guess what? They wanna escape the bombs behind them, they're gonna move up to what? A Brush! <laughs> they're dead. Um, so let me let me go on to the next clip. Uh, yup, yup, yup. Um, <clears throat> so, second game from Tachyon, same exact stuff. Brush means on Rainmaker again. Oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> 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 what are the team comes? Ooh, a Hydra. Hmm, interesting. I can see Blob being annoying on this map also. Uh, you have two Carbon Deco, pretty, pretty close range on your team. Definitely less than the enemies. Uh, um, would highly consider... I mean, okay, see, that's the thing. You have less range in theory, unless you use your Splat Bombs. So definitely the Splat Bombs are gonna be your main tool to uh, annoy the Hydra and make it lose its charge. Same for the Blob, use your Bomb. Your Bomb is gonna be your main tool. Um, also, if you can, if you can basically use your bomb to assist your uh, your carbon uh, players, that would be also pretty helpful. Uh, you nearly have special. I I'll probably focus on using my special now. Okay. <laughs> yep, bomb, pretty good tool. Definitely one thing you wanna do. If you're using the bombs, is you don't just use your bombs as a way to put it somewhere and expect to get a kill. Put it in a in a place that is, that is gonna force the opponents to move towards you. That's what you want as a brush player. If you can throw it like if you were standing up on the ledge and you throw it like way far uh, from the ledge on the on the wall on the other side, the enemies are gonna be forced to move away from the wall and towards the ledge, which you do want that to happen, because then you can hit them from, from the safety of the ledge. Um, and yeah, I, I do think uh, your special is going to be pretty essential there. I think, it, especially on this map, the places where the opponents can move are not that many. Like, if, if you fire your kill well in the middle part, uh, they have to, like, uh, cars on either side so they can't really move uh, or they'll have to retreat or they'll be like cornered in an alleyway <clears throat> also you don't have a lot of pain to escape I mean I guess you're the brush so that's mostly fine oh, okay uh, definitely need to get a lead there Ooh, pretty risky there. Uh, ooh, ooh, maybe it's gonna work. Uh, yeah, okay. So as you can see, the heal well is pretty effective against, uh, I guess, the Rainmaker. Uh, what have we probably done? I know that people usually they they rush to, like th that's one thing I. Whenever I, I play matches or like review matches of other people, my main goal will be consistency, right? I I do want to do some. I want do something if I'm not sure that it's gonna work. Usually whenever you see me hold the Rainmaker, I'm gonna sit in an annoying spot and just start spamming the... the um, just start firing down to basically get a lot of pain down and get a, um, get a lot of damage down and assist my teammates. I'm never really gonna move up unless we either get a wipeout or like the enemies are staggering really bad. Because like you do have five minutes to play the game mode, right? You, you don't really need you're not pressured that much, especially in the beginning of the match. Um, the, the thing though, and the reason why I can't really suggest this to everyone, is that sometimes making a crazy play is actually going to work for you, and you're going to get the checkpoint, it's going to like make the rest of the game easier. So sometimes it can work. I, I'm just not uh, betting on stuff that is inconsistent, basically. <clears throat> So this is why, yeah, like, you took the Rainmaker, you just rushed to the pillar, which uh, was an interesting idea, uh, but you only got the pillar the second time. Uh, what I would have done is just start firing. Because that's, that's the point, like, what is the point of, of having the Rainmaker if you're not using uh, its shots? Because then, 
the whole point of the Rainmaker is that you're slow as heck, but you have additional firepower, and you can start like pushing and moving up slowly. That's the main point. Because if you're not doing that and you're just like rushing to the pillar, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have slow movements and one to make down on your team. <clears throat> Don't slack off on the on the rain. Oh, one of the things that's like true with most things. Reminder, the Rainmaker's main kill power is always on the explosion. You will almost never kill with the actual like direct hit itself, <laughs> unless the <laughs> opponent you're aiming at is weakened. So it's best to aim in front of you on the ground, oh. where the opponent would try to push. Yeah, because I, I do sometimes get some kills by aiming directly at them, uh, but yeah, you're, you're right, I don't get the kill like instantly, it's just like... Firing at them is gonna slow them down, and then they're gonna get finished off by the explosion. So yes, it, it, what you're saying is true. <laughs> but personally, it feels very satisfying to <laughs> hit a direct shot. It's, it's kind of the same as um, hitting a direct shot with the uh, with the ink back. <laughs> <laughs> very satisfying. And sometimes with the rainmaker, you're just gonna want to paint for your team because it's a much better at painting than any other yeah. weapon as well. Yeah. Pretty much. Plus, it's not, it's not necessarily just that it paints well. I mean, I mean, because I guess like the amount of paint that it can put down is not necessarily that crazy, but the main gimmick is that the paint is delayed. So if, if people see that you're firing in a location, they're like, oh, he painted there, let me paint over it. Well, that's kind of useless, because then the explosion is going to happen and it's going to paint again. <laughs> so you, whenever it paints, it doesn't paint that much, but it pa it, it is going to put paint down, like no other options for the enemies. And also, it does a lot of like a big radius of damage of one shot. Um, so it is pretty scary. Like if you see, if you're playing against a rainmaker that that plays pretty good, you you're gonna feel like you don't really have any ways to get up to them. They're just gonna like th that's the thing. They're not gonna get it in like super fast, but you're gonna feel like you can't really get back to them. You can't really stop them. They're gonna be moving slowly, but unstoppably. Uh, anyways, next game from... Oh, look, look what he ha we, we have there. It's Ducky Mio. With the sploosh on Mako Splat Zones. Let's take a look at it. So apparently it's a knockout. So I'm not expecting this to be a game for reviewing necessarily. I don't know. Probably just wanted to, I don't know, send a game to show that they can play the game well. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, so this please. Maybe we have some comments though. Okay, interesting. Well, what, what is the weapon composition? Do you have two rollers? You have the Luna. They have the bow point. Uh, uh, sploosh. Let me think about the sploosh. They have more overall range than your than most of your team. Okay. No true, idea. True. Um, I mean, and apart if you count the flings out. Um, one thing I would probably do. Uh, as you do have pretty pretty stubby range, is play around the cover a lot, and also um, on the on the cover, I guess, because you don't really have blasters or buckets, so it's it's fine to stay on the little the little uh, high grounds on the sides of either of um, on either sides of the spot zone. You can stay up there, and that's gonna basically counteract your short range and allow you to paint over the zone without being on the zone. And then from there you can use your, your sub, you can like charge it up and, and do some sick uh, some sick uh, snipes, which is pretty satisfying. And then you can also see more of the enemies, right? You can have a better view and know when to use your hammer. Oh, they are like at 16 score. Uh, that's not good. You guys are pretty much staggering. One dead, you're nearly dead, two before, not good. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I do see the squid flops you're doing. Let me take a look. Do you have ninja squid? Um, da -da 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 -da. Ducky Mio, no ninja squid. Um, the squid flopping is interesting. I don't think you necessarily need to do that, though. I, I, it's it's kind of weird. Um, I often see people... So my, my main concern is, is mainly with the Luna Blaster. Sometimes I see people jumping before shooting. I'm like, why are you guys doing that? Um... I guess it makes you more mobile, but do you really need to get to be mobile? I mean, I guess if you're getting 
um, into open open sightlines and you're not using cover as much, then yes, you are definitely going to need to uh, jump so to the mobile. So one thing I will say, with Blaster, regarding jumping before shooting even on, a, on an even playing field, sometimes it gives you a little bit more randomness. Like, you might not know where your opponent's going to move. So you well, might just do that. I guess, yeah, in theory, but I mean... If you start becoming good at the, at the game, you just and plus I mean like, I mean sure RNG might, imp like because here's the thing: if you do the math, it might either go to the middle and you're gonna g get H how to explain. Basically, it can go to either side, so it's not gonna be a 50/50 a chance of actually hitting. It's gonna be a one in a third chance of actually hitting and one in a third chance of doing even less damage. So the question is, do you really want to yeah. like bet on RNG, or do you actually want to try to improve your aim and and predict where the enemies are going to go? And so, yeah, here's the thing. With the Luna Blasters, I don't think you really want to be in open sightlines anyway, so you, you wouldn't need the additional movement. You, you'd prefer to, to shark behind a piece of cover. And um, and so, yeah, same, same thing with yeah. the with the sploosh or or other shooters i often see people doing squid flops that's good if you're playing like in open sidelines but here you have so much cover i don't think you really need to you can just like stick behind the wall use your camera which is a third person camera to like see around the wall without actually being exposed and then whenever someone gets close boom you spot them from behind easy like just stay, stand behind the the piece of cover around the spot room Um, but what I was going to say, not only if you, and to, to, like, to make it less often that you actually don't end up hitting, because yes, you do get a little bit more mobility from jumping. You do get a little bit of randomness, so you might have a higher chance of hitting if you were to just jump, if you don't know the person you're playing against, like, at all. You don't have any kind of pattern to go off hmm. of, right? I guess. But since... Luna's blast radius is so big, if you are in that situation, just a little bit of intensify makes it to where even no matter what, you are going to hit, even if you do jump. True, okay, true. But I see people doing that in Splatoon 2 as well, so I don't know. Plus, like, okay, let me let me in just show you something. Two, it's <clears throat> less often, at least on my part, but in three, I like to do a, a couple jump shots if I don't know the person I'm fighting. Mm-hmm. To like see where they're going to go, if. So the thing with the Luna is like, would you prefer to be in that location against that enemy, which is probably um, a splatter shot, right? So like, what what are you? Let, let's say that enemy actually, th this one, or maybe maybe that guy. Okay, this guy is over there. He's got a splatter shot. You want to move up towards him and kill him. How are you gonna do that? Are you gonna like just move in front of him and just like? Try to get in closer with maybe a jump, so that you can get in, in close range, and then have the R the RNG maybe make you miss and not get a one shot, and then you're gonna get instantly splatted because they've got more range and a faster no, DPS. That's not what I would do. Or I would I would swim and stick to the ground, but oh yeah, but if that's if that's if it's more open. But that situation with the cover, I would yeah. go to the cover first. You can just do that. They're In dead. More open situation, I would try to I would try to swim to the to the right. And like either figure out what they plan on doing, where they plan on going. I'll like try to look and see what they're whether they might go. Yep. If I if they're moving towards <laughs> me, and I'm moving towards them, I'm going to jump shot in an in expense that they're going to try to split a lot the way. Yep. So, cause, cause like that person there, like here, they can't see you. you you're hiding in your ink, uh, and you're like sticking to the wall so it's very hard for them to see you you turn your camera like this you see them as soon as they're dropping down or even if they're like standing there and camping you just you just kill them like that now let's say that you have the sploosh like you actually had this game let me find it i'll put it somewhere maybe no no no, no. sploosh okay so we have the sploosh what can you do with the sploosh because you can't hit like around so what you can do is just wait for them to drop down like you're seeing them from safety uh, same. Let, let's let's say that the spot zone was was here, right? That area was the spot zone, and that was the cover on the side of the enemies, right? You just stand below it. You can see people above with with your camera if if you turn your camera that way, and you can see on on the side that they're gonna come from. And if you see someone like moving up like this, 
you just time it correctly, and then whenever they they go past, you just hello, hello, you're dead, right? Or maybe if that's too risky, you wait for them to actually pass you up, and then boom, you just fire at them from behind. And the thing is, if I'm that guy, uh, right coming in, I'm I'm not gonna have the reflex, most likely, to go in the middle of the zone and start looking directly there, because if I'm going, if I'm like pushing in the zone i mainly focus on the enemies on the other side of the zone i'm not focused on the one guy camping me there which might not even exist you you get what i mean so that that's very useful play around cover a lot when you have short stubby range cover is your, is your best ally uh okay next game which one is it uh uh so that was the sploosh by ducky we got the splatter shot uh on haggle tower control by tacking again. Okay. Wait, is it the same tacking? I don't think it is. <clears throat> is it? No, it's not. It is it. <clears throat> so they're saying I'm using the splatter. Sh <laughs> oh my god! Push! <laughs> it's great. I'm using the splatter shot here. Can someone review my gameplay? We win, but I didn't feel impactful. Can someone point out the correct positioning? Ah, no, 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 no. I need to take. I'll try to be. I try to be in front of the tower, but I just get splattered by a roller or get flanked. I'm not sure what to do when I am on the back foot. I feel like I hug behind the tower too much and it's dangerous to go anywhere else, but there are bombs and constant ink streams coming your way. Uh, I would probably start using the same then. Just use your suction bomb. Uh, fight fire with fire. They want to be in wing at range, just do the same. They want to poke, just poke. And then the the, the, the question, yeah. <clears throat> Basically, you fight on equal ground. And then they're gonna be like, mm, okay, we can't really push forward. Let's let's try using specials. And now it's a battle of specials. And if the battle is not going, you if if the, it's kind of like rock paper scissors, right? I I think actually, because if you think about it, like shooters and main weapons are pretty good. But if you if you get a splat bomb, a will play splat splat bomb. It's probably gonna win over it. You're probably gonna have to drop your Hydra charge. You're probably gonna have to um, relocate. Maybe your weapon is slow, uh, so that means that you're gonna need to uh, stop firing for a while. And then you've got uh, the specials, which most often can eat bombs, right? Um, and they can just like invalidate them. And then you've got the main weapons, which actually sometimes they can uh, go back at specials. Um, so if you have, for example, big bubbler, you just fire at the big bubbler. He's gonna get shot eventually. You have the ink back, you just get up close to it, you you do some melee damage. Some stuff like that. It's like someone is firing the tenta missiles, you can just get up close to them and kill them when they're, while they're stuck in the animation, right? It's kind of like rock, paper, scissors. If, if you're on the losing side of rock, paper, scissors, just move on to the next step faster than your opponents. Uh. I mean, obviously, it's not like, like it's not necessarily super consistent, right? Like, for example, the Trizuka, you're better off just using a bomb on it. Uh, same thing with the with the tri strike. Um, or I get, I guess not actually, because the tri strike would be better off with your main weapon, because they'll have time to walk out of the bomb, whereas your main weapon actually pins their feet and they can't do that back. So yes. Um, let me take a look at the position though. Okay. Ooh, nice kill. What I would probably do though, um, before using my special, is use a suction bomb. Oh, always good to use your your subs before using your special, because um, that that gives you an instant refill so if, if you do have like nearly a full charge just use it as much as you can before using your special because you yeah, otherwise all that ink is going to be not a waste but like it, it's a wasted opportunity to just use a free sub basically before your special oh. now if you have no reason to throw your sub though 
like let's say there is no area to paint or there isn't an, a, a someone nearby, then it's just best to just use the special. Like too close to the exact. Not like as in nearby as in like oh in your line of sight, but as in like someone that isn't in your like direct range of where you would want to throw it. For example. I mean, you know though, do that I, just... I, I don't think there's ever a, a bad a bad way to use your sub. Just having your sub, especially if it's a suction bomb, right? It's gonna stay long enough that, because especially again, this is, lots of people say Splatoon is a fast game. Your su even though there are no enemies now near your suction bomb, there might be in I don't know, like uh, one and a half seconds, and the the suction bomb might just be the thing that uh, gives you a little bit extra time on your push. So it's, there's never a wrong time to send your your sub before a special. Yeah, but it, it's more so depending on what the sub and special are. Yeah, I mean, true. Like, if, if you're trying to panic button Booyah Bomb, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's say... Go on defense mode really what quick. Are, what are specials? Like, with, um... With the Zipcaster weapons, for example, right? Uh-huh. With Bucket, there is there is a reason to use Angle Shooter before Zipcaster. Mm -hmm. With Luna Blaster, throwing a splat bomb before Zipcaster, it's not going to get too much use. Unless, let's say, you see someone that might camp your jump spot and you're trying to go for a charger that's oppressing the rest of your team. Yeah. Yeah. The, but a if that the AI is there, says you can probably yo just on Twitch. Zipcast. Hello. Okay. Uh, my eyes are absolutely burning. And my, my and then with Stamper, hurting. Stamper, I would say, yeah, you want to throw that burst bomb first. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, okay, Seems so like in that game you were maybe playing too safe, um, and in some of the engagements you took, there was a couple where it seemed like you were trying to kite, but you don't have the range to do so. Um, I mean. I wouldn't say you were useless during that game, though. There is, yeah. Some, yeah, I mean, that that jumping splatter shot got you a couple times, but you were able to keep him distracted long enough and ex exert pressure on him that either a teammate got you or you got some tower points out of it. Oh, um, I will say that game that game you took a look at was being a little bit more um careful with Luna. That's because I did I did remember the fact that I am you I'm not using swim speed. I'm using Ninja Squid, so I am slower than than if I were to have uh, swim, swim speed or just not have um, Ninja Squid. So I was being careful to, because I knew I couldn't move as quickly without uh, Squid rolling. Okay. Um, so let's move on quickly to the next stuff because we already had, oh my gosh, 2 hours and 20 seconds. Uh, tw uh, no, 2 hours and 20 minutes, and we haven't even done 20 clips. Uh, we're still at 17. Uh, so, okay, rapid fire. Um, this, cause yeah, we, we have, since we're like three people commenting right now, we do have a lot of stuff to say after the games. <laughs> uh, so this one is from Wilkie on Mahi Rainmaker with the splash. <laughs> so what do we have? <clears throat> I wish they burst bombs an opener with that. I wish what what what? I would say I would say real quick burst bomb. I think is an opener with a splash. I'm not fully sure on how to use it yet. Splash an opener? Oh, uh, I get. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's an opener though necessarily. It's, but you're not gonna need to finish off kills as much because since he's got like very fast fire rate, very, very like pretty. Good DPS, if not like very great, um, and also its accuracy is like on point. So if you if you can aim, there is literally zero reason to use your burst bomb while you're firing at someone already. It's mainly an oca occasional finisher, and maybe just to annoy the enemies, and also to move about, because that's a good thing. Uh, the, my main use for the um, for the burst bomb on the slash is that the splash has perfect accuracy in the air, and if you do um, use your burst bomb on walls and stuff to instantly paint them, then you can get on the wall, do a squid roll out of the wall, and then basically have some bit of invincibility, have, like, be mobile in the air, 
and still shoot at them like very precisely. I might be thinking of burst bomb a little bit too aggressively with that much time. <laughs> and uh, another thing, Gosh, like I we're think we're absolutely destroying them. Here we go. Yeah. I think the burst bomb also, if you do want to find a very good use for it, is to throw it at the rainmaker. Because if you throw it right onto the rainmaker, it's gonna have no option to do anything again with that. It's just gonna need to, to, I mean, I guess, struggle for one or two seconds. Because yeah. by the by the time it charges a shot again. Oh yeah, like if if you have a rainmaker being all alone without their teammates and they're just like trying to push solo, just a quick burst bomb, and they're basically their whole push is dead. They're they're dead instantly. Okay. I'm not sure I would have picked that up just because you had two teammates down. Yeah, good thing you had to check when you still though. Oh. Yeah, jumping with Luna does provide a lot of ability, looking at it now. Uh, what did you say? Did you say it provides a lot of mobility? Yeah, jump jumping with um Luna does provide a lot of ability, so I do I do see reason for it there. But I mean I guess so I like, thinking... you said that you were using uh ninja squid, so do you need to get out of your ring and visible? Oh no! That's depending on like what you have, what situation you're in. Yeah. Just, just get it. Just give me a quick no. Okay. Okay. Game is done. Do they have any comments by the way? I don't know. That's on uh on on the board. Uh. Where? I still think. Oh yeah, but we'll okay. My rank up game from C plus to B minus. I play Slayer most of the time. Okay. That's pretty good. Not a lot to add though, except from the little tips we gave for uh, the burst bomb. Yeah. Uh, I guess I noticed some some walking and shooting. If you're not hitting your enemy, then you gotta go back and farm and reposition. If you're gonna walk, you're gonna walk, shoot, and turn slightly. So we got two more games yeah, with the uh, oh low battery. Let me charge my controller. Uh, we got two more games with the splash. Uh, one's on Mahi Rainmaker again. Wait, no, that's the one we just saw, right? Yes. Wait, was it the one we just saw? Oh yes. Okay. And then the second one is yeah. by OxyClean. Uh, Eagle Tail Clumblitz with the splash again. Um, the I this feels like it's gonna go clean. extremely bad. The i6 says, just want to say I respect what you're doing here, and I know it takes a lot of time to make those videos. Thank you. Everybody's helping a bit. That's that's Aww. why it's great. I'm putting it in video form and everybody can comment. <clears throat> like, well, I will say my commentary saying I feel like it's good, this is going to go very bad is because, like, I know Eeltel is very hard to fight on for Glam Blitz. Oh, uh, true. Uh, I mean, okay, here's one thing. I mean, okay, yeah, true, you, you do need some coordinated teammates if you do want to make some of those crazy strats. But here's an idea I had, like, cr crazy idea, right? Let's say, do, do you guys see, like, Salmon Run, Tornado, where, like, yeah. it's it's pretty efficient to make a chain? What about we do this for Clumless, right? It's just, like, one, one, of you, one of us is, like, in our base, and we make a chain up until the, the bridge on top of the enemy's base. <laughs> we just, like, throw Clumless one by one. <laughs> and then, like, that could work can... for quickly moving something around, but that in, oh, in, so. in actual like theory won't work because these are not salmonid. They are going to see you and they're going to attack. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess like yeah, especially yeah. on this map, you have one <clears throat> player. That's I I could totally see like someone hiding right here, like behind the uh, behind that spot. It's it's pretty hidden. As long as you're not playing like S plus too much, right? Uh, you could probably just hide there if you are in open with a uh, with, uh, coordinated team, you can probably... Like, I've actually... Listen. No, here's the funny thing. I've tried that before. Like, I've gotten there without anyone seeing me get there before. Yeah. And, like, I just sat there for a good second and, like, said and said to my, like, my teammate, Oh, uh, can you jump me real quick? I'm in, a, I'm in a safe spot. The moment I said that, someone just checked that area and killed me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I guess if you're all sticking to the walls and just like the person on the back of the map is just gathering up clams and you just like throw them 
Because especially like this map has so much cover in the middle of the screen, so you can totally throw them without being seen. I feel like at least it would be a funny thing. <laughs> I, I definitely yeah, want there at is, some point. There is a lot of cover, but there isn't enough to be able to like say, oh yeah, they're not going to notice you, guarantee. Yeah. Especially since the the football is pretty big. No, I'm, I'm not the football. Like I'm, I'm saying, like the individual oh, clams. If, it, if it's just like a couple like smaller clams, yeah. Like you need to at least you need to make sure that each person has like six clams at least, though. No, well, that's what I'm saying. Let's say like we don't care about the clams we have because we're all gonna throw them towards the person further ahead and then we all end up passing the clams one by one teammate by teammate up until the guy just receives all of the clams and dumps it's well, <laughs> then again isn't there a trail like behind the clams when you throw them i have no clue i like I, some of the um that's big a shots question. uh thing it's a pretty good question i i don't think the tr the trail is that big though and again if you have a lot of cover though again that, that's think, just like my not that it's big, but i think ramblings. it's pretty noticeable at least yeah I mean, obviously, if you're playing against, like, um, you know, good players, uh, you're not going to fool anyone. But it, it's, it's definitely a fun idea I've been thinking of. I, at some point, I, I do want to make my uh, pro meme team, right? And just have some, just the, the dumbest stuff ever and just, like, try to actually lab it seriously. Right? Like, um, full I know, team I know of under I was playing on um, Flam Blitz with uh, Swim Speed, uh... What was it? I was playing Slim Speed Flossing the game. Okay. And that went pretty well. I the amount of times they just ran up in the, in, into the enemy's base and just like tossed a couple clans in. I got away with a bit too much. Yeah. Like currently the, the two things I'm testing out recently are full uh run speed uh tentabrella. Cause actually so fun fact, the Tenderbrilla, it does, it is pretty fast at walking in between the shots. Like, you know how like there, there's some stats and stuff where you have some base walking speed and whenever you shoot, the, the walking speed is reduced. But here's the thing, in between your shots, it doesn't count as shooting, it counts as walking. So you're gonna, like, whatever your top run speed is gonna be with, like, max run speed is gonna be the speed at which you move in between the shots, which is absolutely broken. You can basically do some, uh some strafing with a like very powerful shotgun and if you can land the one shot it's pretty it's pretty cool and satisfying and uh Although, and then I'm, i will say i do think it's damage needs a little bit of a buff if you don't hit all the uh, pellets i don't i don't think so i don't think so it's, um it, like i think you should have like a, a in like the actual whole shotgun mechanic where if it's closer it does more damage if further away it does less because here's the rollers. thing here's what i how i think about the um, about the because you see how like the reticle is pretty big but it, it isn't big to indicate that you can one shot in that whole range it's big to indicate that it's very inaccurate and if you do want to one shot it's pretty much sniper accuracy that you need to have but that sniper accuracy you're gonna have to have it at close range which is even harder but to balance this you have the big tentable shield which is it's very unique and fun so i don't necessarily see that it needs a damage buff or like an RNG buff. I do think it's it's pretty fair, considering like it has a freaking shield. So basically, basically, it can eat bombs. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, and it can eat bullets, but it's it's like having a, a really hard to use special at all times. It eats those bullets, but on its own, it doesn't get too much off from all yeah. eating those bullets. Yeah, because here's here's one thing I can totally agree with. I'm the kind of person who's gonna say, who's gonna like keep arguing that a weapon is not that bad, right? Because all weapons can paint, all weapons can kill, and stuff like this. But I will agree that some weapons are easier to play and therefore easier to win with, right? Because like Tenderbrilla can kill very good, it can do some crazy stuff, but you need to be a legend to play it correctly. <laughs> so I will agree uh, on that. In that last game, uh, I like OxyClean's mechanical ability. I think they're pretty good at movement and being fast. Uh, you were kind of going uh, pretty uh, vigilante solo on the basket, though, which can work for like scoring once, maybe, but you weren't really playing with your team all that much. You were just kind of running in and scoring one power climb and getting out, which can work, I guess. And in this case, it did work. But if you only get 20 or 10 points that way, 
and if your opponents hmm. are able to come in with a good powerful push then they can usurp that lead pretty easily so i would like to see just paying more attention to your teammates yeah I, I do think though that i mean it wasn't necessarily that bad to get up close to the enemies considering that they had uh two uh back lines uh and you guys didn't have as as many backline options Wait, no, 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 I'm looking at the wrong game. Never mind. Uh, never mind, I retire what I just said. Um, that was the next game. Well, let's move on to the next game then. Uh, from Takin. I got bamboozled. I'm pretty tired. Um, so yeah, let's look at the other comments. So this one is, uh, blah, 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 is Pentatech, right? On Scorchboard, Splat Zones by Takin. Uh, they're saying, can someone please review this? I really don't know what I could have done better. I watched the replay. Felt like I had ever, like I had every special and a half dumped on me. Uh, oh, like I had every special and a half dumped on me specifically every time. Okay. Uh, ouch. Uh, there, there are definitely games where it feels like that, and sometimes it actually is like that. Yeah. Mm. I mean, also I would say it depends on where you're placing yourself, because if you're placing yourself in the middle of the map, like stuff like the kill whale and, and like the tentacle missile are going to have an easier time targeting you, so that might also be due to your placement. Let me take a look at the, the specials that uh, the enemies have. They have the wave breaker, okay, pretty hard to avoid. Uh, the hammer, if you get sniped, okay, two wave breakers and a kill whale, that's going to be your main concern. Well, I see that's the thing, like, the kill whale doesn't, I mean, the wave breaker, I mean, doesn't necessarily target you specifically, it's a kind of everyone. <clears throat> okay, nice. Are they scoped? No, they're not scoped. How did they not escape that bomb? Um, uh, Splat Zone, we do need to print. We do pretty good opener with the special. You have a 4v2, I would throw lies on that. Start painting up mid a bit more. I don't necessarily think going into the enemy's base right now is the best option. Because, well, first off, yeah. we got marked, so now we need to we definitely need to get back. Because that, yeah, you're dead. Um, you didn't have any also teammates. also didn't check for the mine. That mine right there. I mean, okay, so, so I don't know how top players do that, or if they're able to do that. That mine, I would have also taken it. Because, I'm gonna. Which weapon has the mines there? Wait, hold on. Uh, the weapon that has the mine, if I'm right, is the E-Leader. The e the e leader doesn't have mines in, in Splatoon 3. What? No, if I'm right, it does have mines. The, that, oh, the wait, e no, it has mines. Okay, I thought it had it had beacons. I just, my brain just switched to Splatoon 2 for a yeah. second there. Okay. e leader <laughs> has mines. Um, yes. Then again, the reason why I say I would have checked that spot first is because I know when I play a button with mines, I like to put a mine there as well. Yeah. I totally forgot how to play the, the like, e-leader personally. How many pe how many people would you expect to like paint there? Yeah. Before exactly like traveling true. there. Yeah. So that, that's they would why I'm like closer to that side to that corner to mm. get uh, to get into the enemy base, not around it. Uh huh. So th that's mainly why I'm saying it d it doesn't really. Like, the, the main issue I had with this interaction is not necessarily the fact that they they run into the incline because that that was a pretty easy mistake to do. It's not necessarily their fault. That just it's good positioning of mines from the e leaders part. My main concern is not like blaming what happened. Is like why did it happen? It happened because you, you went all alone in the enemy space without any teammates while all the enemies were respawning, and you didn't have like great coverage of mid yet. So that's. Yeah, either way yeah. it was bad. I am. Either way, that probably wasn't the best idea. Mm -hmm. But in case of that mine, mm -hmm. that was pretty exponential because it does a bit of damage that you could, could have been killed off with no problem. It's the tracking part after that because not only does that mine hit them for 30 damage, yeah. now the spy stringer which, which was respawning mm -hmm. knows who you are and can hit you over ledges and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That makes you a lot more vulnerable against that. Okay. So wait, hold on. Did I read the comments? What what the they saying? Uh, what could I have done better? Every special dumped on me. Hmm. I didn't see that many specials. Yeah. I didn't see that hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I do think probably... Because, like, you're, you're mainly getting shot... The, the main annoying stuff that you're getting shot by is the explosions from the Tri-Stringer. And also... Well, that first incline, but that didn't happen too much. I think that your main problem is mainly the Tri-Stringer. It's, it's the one thing you can't really fight against as well. Which is but, okay. why like, I, I, you should try to avoid. I, I do see, although you do not get killed by the specials, you do get targeted by a lot of them. Um, so my main concern... Yeah, okay, okay, this is pretty chaotic. What I would do there is just, like, back off. If you see too much explosions, too many things happening at once, your main goal is to stop pushing forward and just start going back. Just start being defensive a bit. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Try straight. Uh, sus. <laughs> Using it as a panic button. I don't know. Especially on, on this mode, like if you see the, the pink cover there uh, on the side of the zone, it does make it pretty pretty cumbersome to get through to the other side of the, of the zone. It's like, it's very tight. Same here, like you got targeted by the kill wheel and your first goal was to focus the person, which I guess is, is valid since you're in overtime. But like that, that makes you more vulnerable to the heal wheel then. And yeah, so if you try to go on the other side of the zone, you do have the pink cover, which makes it hard. Uh, so if you do want to have more space to move around when you're targeted by like every single special slash sub in the world, you do want to be in the back, not close to that pink cover, which is going to make it hard for you to move about. Uh, now let's just catch up on the messages that are have been sent on Twitch by the eye. I think they said some pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, tent just teleports with run speed, basically. Right. It's it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Um, as a tent main, there's only one buff I want, which is more shield HP. I do agree. Back in Splatoon 2, I used to put a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, <coughs> whatever that ability is called that people hate, kind of, or... Main power up. Yeah, exactly. I had the... Oh, I just have so many good memories of playing on Hour 1 or more. Do, do you know, like, the, whenever you play Clambless, there's, like, the little clam basket, and you have the little pathway on the on the left side when you're going into the enemy's base and basically if you have oh, the yeah just like LDE main power up a little bit of run speed <laughs> no no no, no. Just, okay so here's the here's the plan here's the fun plan you just have all mains of uh main power up is so super buffed up souped up uh the tent of the shield then you pick the sorrel umbrella right and what it does is that it has a uh, splash wall so that's uh, th whenever you're recharging your ink you have the splash wall to protect you and then whenever you're kind of like running out on, on ink on uh, for your sub or main weapon you just use your special which what what is a special it is um the thing where you can spam the curling bomb which is basically an even better version of uh, of the Tentabrilla slash slash. It's basically, roll. oh, I'm going to paint your entire base in a couple of seconds, and you can't do shit about it. <laughs> it's not even like painting the entire base. I'm just like holding uh, holding the the, um, the flank approach forever, and they they have like I can be against three opponents. They're not going to do anything. Like I swear, it's so broken. Yeah, they have to avoid the direct hit and the explosions of the curling bomb. Yes, they. It's, and the, since the the flank is so like uh, long, you can always oh, it's just like... yeah. If if you get pressured a bit too much, you can just like back off and fire your your tentabrilla wall from farther, and you you can keep that wall for forever. It's I definitely see how like the the approach that they're taking for the the Splatoon three maps make it not as broken. I it feels more balanced. It feels annoying to play maybe on the Splatoon yeah, 3 maps, with, but it feels The fact broken. that main pop is also gone, that also brings it down a little bit further as well. Because, mm -hmm. okay, one, one thing, like, people say, oh, the maps are too tight, but here's the thing. Uh, playing Sniper on the Reef on in Splatoon 2 is awful. It's honestly awful. You can get, like, flanked from, like, five different direc directions at all times. There's no way you can predict where the person is going to be. Uh, or like aim at them. The, whereas like in Splatoon 3, like the E leader is top tier because it has so much power, uh, which is good. I think it, it balances out the power of every single uh, kind of range that weapons could have. You you have some good picks in all range categories, on all maps, pretty much. Anyways, um, next messages. Blah, blah, blah. Learn motion is my first tip unless you get motion sickness from it. Mm -hmm. Agreed, because you do need to aim pretty accurately. To be honest, it feels like they're they just are being blindly aggressive, if that makes 
sense. Okay, like they sometimes just solo push without a plan. Really. Oh, you you were talking about the game. Uh. Okay. 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 Um. So I I guess now we can move on to the other batch. We're two hours and forty minutes. And we still have fifteen clips to review. Hopefully, we're gonna get under four 15? hours. Fifteen. Yes. No. Yeah, fifteen. Let's go for. I thought it was three last time. I heard it. No, three to get to twenty. Three hours. <laughs> oh, three to get to twenty. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was saying like we're, we're not rapping firing through them. Like, I think we, we went like forty minutes too much over what I would have expected it to last. Uh, like, um. So okay, we have. Da -da -da -da. Uh, plus, like my brain is hurting because I'm I'm sick. <laughs> I'm dying. Uh, one, two, three, oh. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I think this is the next one on uh, High Goldfish Rainmaker. Let me take a look. Uh, on High Goldfish Rainmaker by, by Zern Jared with the splatter shot. Uh, uh, let's play it and let's read the commentary. Can anyone give me commentary on this match? I've gotten several matches like these in a row. Uh, in the span of three days of playing, and it is so frustrating. Is it a me problem? How can I carry better? I feel like there are so many moments where that my team could push and they just didn't. Okay. <clears throat> so let's take a look at it. We do have three slash shots. Hmm. One stamper. They do have quite a bit of range. They do have the splat ring, which is going to be very strong. Uh, they do have the tri ring, which is going to be very. I'm good at being annoying. So I do feel like since you only have shooters, uh, it might be kind of hard to get up on the enemies because they have so much like it's different ways to attack, whereas you only have one. So I, I would probably focus on using my sub to Why aren't you jumping there, you just had to wipe out. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I would probably focus on my bombs a lot because it will drop the charge of the um, of the you know you can just jump over the wave breaker and keep shooting at the ringmaker. Um, but yes, you uh, using your bombs a lot will help you dro make the uh, splatling drop its charge and also displace the bow more. I just use one one. How did the rainmaker get over there? You guys had a white out. Why don't you have checkpoint? What just happened. I don't know. Plus, they're gonna have a pretty straight shot of the, of the enemy in there. Yeah, see there, like you were trying to fight against a rainmaker and a splatling with your your spot shot. That's not gonna work. Uh, so you definitely need to use your subs a bit more. I think I think I could have won that if you just swam, swam ouch, and ouch, 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 just no shot way, down no way. and get close enough to uh -huh. shoot him. Yeah. You don't necessarily want it, like, it's, it's good that you pop your special, it's always good to use your special before you die, but definitely keep in mind that it has a lot of range, you don't, you don't need to come up to the enemies before you use it. Just, if, if you have some experience with snipers, just get in the same spot, basically. Or, or any other backline weapon. And you basically get to become a backline for like 3 seconds. Ooh, interesting. Okay, check one got. Interesting. Though you're gonna have to get a lot of a lead there if you wanna get it back. Uh, my main concern would probably be okay, so the carbon roller if, if you can try to flank the enemies, I do think in in game modes that aren't turf for you do have some approach options on the sides of the map, especially on the left. I don't think a lot of enemies loot. And since you have a lot of shooters in your team composition, I think it, it would be pretty useful to get behind uh, both the splatling and the tri stringer. Same with the, the pro, it's, it's not that slow, but it, it's mainly going to be focused with hitting people in front of it. Um, the main concern would be the carbon deco. Uh, I mean, they're just the carbon. Um, but if you can, if you can get a successful flank, I would do that. Maybe though, the tent attack would be the, the better weapon to do that. 
but I definitely think like you've got a, a range that is slightly shorter than the enemies, and they do have way way better firepower and ways to fire at you. So don't go in forward expecting to win, unless you're throwing up that suction bomb. But even then, the suction bomb is only gonna slow them down, not kill them, probably. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, Timer sticking down. You're pro this match is probably already lost. Ooh. Usually, one one good thing to to do is to not expect to be able to bring back a game all the time. Like sometimes a game is pretty much lost in the beginning of it there's no reason to expect to win because if, if you do if you are like oh we need to play faster or better and we're gonna get uh, i would watch my my left side right there because someone might just sneak up on you i would probably also throw a suction bomb uh at the enemies behind because then it's gonna drop their their charge and you're gonna have a free rainmaker explosion from that like see like he, he went into the battle like he went behind the rainmaker in the enemy's paint when you could have just like thrown a suction bomb to do that for you to fight him um so yeah I, w I was saying like sometimes you can just like know that a game is finished before it's actually finished and that way you you don't rush uh to get a a, a win uh faster and subsen subsequently die easier and help the enemy team get even more score instead of what if you don't if you expect that the game is already going to be a loss you just keep playing the game you're like okay well l let me just try to at least hold my own at least just play like a normal match maybe maybe i can get some kills maybe that's what is, i'm gonna get uh, the positive i'm gonna get out of this match and that way since you're not like rushing too much and you're not like stressed and you're just playing normally you're gonna have more chances of playing correctly right um and maybe in turn playing correctly is gonna help you maybe uh question mark get the lead back but that's you shouldn't expect it there is a fine balance there because i know myself there's a lot of times where it's like a minute or 30 seconds left in the match and i'm like there's that, no that's way still we a come bunch back of time I think. And, I, and i just stop trying <laughs> and it's not good no, I, I don't like honestly personally i would just if you're losing pretty badly, just expect, okay, this is probably going to be a loss, but I'm still going to keep trying my best. Not doing anything special, right? Just just playing normally, playing the correct way, as, as I would usually. Yeah. And then you, ju you just keep going. And the only times where you should really, like, rush super, super fast is, like, when you have, like, five, maybe, okay, ten seconds left, let's say. If you have the timer taken down, now's your time to actually speed up. 30 seconds is still kind of fine. In 30 seconds, you have enough time to... Swim around, for example, if it's clam blitz, you have enough time to gather up enough clams to get the par clam and get into overtime. And then as long as you stay safe and you don't rush during overtime, maybe you just chill in your side of the map with the, with the par clam to keep the, over the overtime going. That's going to give you enough time for your team to uh, um, go out, get more clams, get maybe more power clams, uh, paint the map a bit during overtime, and maybe that's going to net you a dunk. Maybe, but maybe not. Uh, so next next match is from in from okay Mario Link on Inglot Splat Zones with a splatter shot. Uh, they're saying, hey. Oh yeah, so yeah. By the way, for the last game, uh, you're saying that it's frustrating. I think it's mainly because you're getting in danger when clearly you have no chance of winning instead of using your your suction bombs. Use use them more. Uh, this one, they say, hey, what do we need to improve on? I mean, Splatter Trap and then rank A minus. Okay. So, this is Splat Zones. <clears throat> you do have the Blob and the, and the Bow on either team. That's about equal bamboozling power. You do have the Blaster, though, which, which could be better at finding around the tower compared to the enemy team having free shooters. I don't know, maybe. But it, it definitely means that you need to play slower. Like they they have like three splatter shots and a blob, which blob can definitely hold its own in close quarters. Um, if you pressure it, it, it might just kill you either way because it, it has some bamboozling power. Especially in this match, there are a couple of uh, mm -hmm. more tight spaces. Yep. So you, you you do have a range blaster and the bow, so you you 
you wanna play more smartly, more slower, maybe assist them a bit, right? M make the fights easy for them. It I would say just play skirmisher for, for them. You just like go into fights, but don't necessarily try to kill people. Uh, you just like put your your suction bomb to basically hold, have some zone pressure for a while. You use your shot your shots to bait people around a corner of the tower of the middle tower, but you don't necessarily push in like you just did right now. You whenever you got the attention of someone, you just go back now. It's it's your time. They they're aggro on you. You just go back. You just lead them slowly to your base. And then guess what they're gonna be greeted by? Your um, your bow and your uh, range blaster. I, I think those two are the, the the things that are gonna assist you the most with them. Because at, at least even if they don't get the kills, just like having the the splash damage from the explosions of the bow is at least gonna do some some chip damage to the enemies, and that's gonna mean. I mean, I don't know the exact values, but maybe it's gonna be a two-shot or a one-shot for the... Um, to spot them with your weapon. The bow hits for roughly 35, I think? Maybe 40-something? Per, per shot, on a, right? On a direct? So that means that would roughly cut it off by, by an entire shot. Okay. Um... It actually does burst bomb damage, so... And burst bomb damage always cuts off shot. From any other, from any weapon. When I mean, considering they they rank A minus, I wouldn't necessarily expect the bow to be that good at aiming though. But yeah, still one 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 shot less on the splatter shot is pretty good. Um, also, yeah, th that is actually the, 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 the um the splash damage is pretty significant too. Uh huh. So there was an interaction with the blob there where where they were doing the smart thing and firing behind the cover but using the walls to basically fire um around it which was very smart so you didn't have really any ways to like yeah they're doing it again so what are you gonna do now just get exposed and, and kill and try to kill them or are you gonna throw a suction ball and basically force them to go back and, and keep them basically cornered in that side of the map where they can't really do too much uh let me do a quick look at the messages Nodradox says, are you winning? I don't know. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no. yeah, breathe. Calm down. Yep, no problem. <clears throat> I mean, yes, problem, but yeah. <laughs> do you ever wish they, like, do you ever think to yourself whenever you play Splatoon, like, darn, that game isn't as realistic as I would like it to be, like, it's not like Call of Duty or whatever, like, it's chill season, but we don't have mechanics to have, like, diseases or stuff like this. Can <laughs> I get some of those? You don't need to be that realistic. Well, that's that way there will be more, more like, there will be a whole meta form around, like, getting up gear abilities that prevent you from getting sick. <laughs> 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 imagine, okay, imagine a Splatoon uh, simulation game, like life simulation, kind of like Animal Crossing, because I mean, like, for heck's sake, it's made by I the same team, that. it's made by the same team, just have one where it's like, instead of doing some fighting and stuff, you're just making your little house, kind of like the locker, but a full game around that, and then you oh, have- were you here, like, were you here in the Splatoon com community, like, a year ago? When that one post came to like Twitter or like Facebook or something, yeah, about a new Splatoon game the Splatoon like, Island, like, the Splatoon Island, yeah, uh, was made by yeah. um, I forgot, I forgot. Just, Mike no. Inel. It was made by Mike Inel. I thought Inel. that was real. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're they're very talented. They're they're an NSFW yeah. artist, by the way. I was yeah, like, darn. Darn, I know them There's from somewhere. So much you can do with it, spin on. it actually looked like it could have been an actual thing. It didn't look like there was like SFW. I do think they were using some SFM models though at some point, so I was like, mm, that doesn't look quite official. It looks it, it the the head models look convincing enough, but the the body models look kind of uh, weird and not correct. Um, uh, the so one that I saw looked correct, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's especially if you look at the um, the inkling girl that was on the boat thing. Whatever, we're getting we're getting too far into the, the that whole fake thing. Um, so that, wa <laughs> that was a uh, 
brain. Answer me. What was that? Wait, no, hold on. How many clips do we still have? I don't know. Oh. Brush. Not now. That, we, we done that? Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So, here's the deal. I'm probably too tired to continue right now. So, either we do a break or we continue tomorrow. Because I I am dead. Like, ugh. I'm, I'm sick with the... With the yeah, season. I was thinking of calling it quits <clears throat> after yep. one or two. But, plus but I'm okay with calling it quits now. Well, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a part two, um, maybe tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll keep you up to date yeah, on yeah. Discord. Uh, until then, though, I guess um, I guess see you next time. How many have you gone through? Yeah. I've gone through uh, 21, and I I have like a total of 35. So yes, we we still we're like more than halfway done for next time. It's gonna be pretty easy. So yep. Anyways, thank you for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.